Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for First Friday Sew-In, my once a month live sew along. All right, so just a few details about First Friday. This is technically our second go at having our First Friday Sew-In. Our first month, which was last month, we had a bunch of techni technical difficulties, so we didn't quite make it to the live stream, but it looks like things so far, fingers crossed, are working out well tonight. So. Um, just as a quick overview, uh, the first Friday sew-in will be from 7 p.m. Central Time to 8.30 p.m. Central Time on the first Friday of every month. Um, our technology allows for us to have up to 25 um, sewers join me on our live stream. So we post the links to join in the private chat room in the Facebook group about 30 minutes before we go live. So if you would like to join, we have a few spots left in tonight's chat. Um, just jump on to the Facebook group and uh, my husband Danny has posted the link to join the group there. Um, if you just wanna sit and sew and watch the live stream, it'll be available on Facebook and YouTube as it normally is. They'd have to be known that because they're watching right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we have a few people joining in with me already, and so I'm going to go down the line and allow everyone to introduce themselves uh, by name, where they're from, and if they want to tell you anything else about them, such as um, how long they've been sewing for. So we're going to start with the first one that was on with us tonight, and that's Christina. So Christina, if you wouldn't mind kicking it off for us. Hi, I'm Christina. I am in South Florida, so I am in the Fort Lauderdale suburbs out in West Broward County. Um, I've been sewing. I learned in girls club, like middle school, after school programs, but really picked it up probably about seven years ago. And I like to say I'm YouTube University slash Sarah slash Crafty Gemini Tots. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Next, next in line is Michelle. Michelle Graham. So Michelle, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself also. Sorry, I needed to unmute. Um, so I'm Michelle. I've only been sewing two and a half years. Oh, I, uh, I guess I live in Ottawa. That was the other thing I guess I needed to mention. Um, two and a half years, I was self-taught. Nobody in my family ever sewed. We were all a family of knitters, crocheters, pretty much every craft you can think of but sewing for some odd reason. Um, self-taught then I watched Crafty Gemini a little bit and I don't know if anybody else heard of Melanie Ham. watched her a little bit then I found Sarah and well the rest is history I'm pretty much stuck to you now you're not getting rid of me I'm like a bad cold <laughs> <laughs> and if you're a member of our Facebook group you'll have seen Michelle Graham posting on pretty much everyone's posts she's our biggest cheerleader so thanks so much for doing that I know um, I certainly appreciate the support and I know everyone else does in the group as well. So thanks so much, Michelle, for doing all that. No problem. Absolutely. <laughs> right. My pleasure. I have fun doing it. I'm like, uh, people are starting to ask if I ever sleep. Just so everybody knows, I do <laughs> sleep. It's probably about two hours a night that I get. And then I'm back up at it. And that's what this stuff does. My energy drink, which is coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we should start a no or wine. Club. I'll be on there in yeah. the forums. I'll see Michelle type something and Bronwyn type. And I might say something. I'm like, man, we're all up really early, but Bronwyn's, I guess, up late. I, I'm not sure how that works out. <laughs> Bronwyn yeah. often tells me to go to bed. Like, we'll be chatting, and it'll be like 2.30 in the morning my time, so that's 1.30 your time. And Bronwyn's like, hey, go to bed. I'm like, I'm not tired. Stop being my mother, would you? I'm not <laughs> tired. I'm a mom. <laughs> like, I'm okay. I'm okay. But then I'm like, oh, no, she's right. I should get some sleep. And then usually back up at like 6.30 back on again because that's the first thing i got to do is check and then i'm back on and then then i start my day <laughs> yeah i see cheryl uh, leaving a comment on youtube um nice to see you michelle and melissa you're awesome michelle so, thank you everyone nice <laughs> to see everybody too <laughs> i saw linda jumped in on the in the group a couple minutes ago so linda if you wouldn't mind um introducing yourself telling us where you're from and um, how long you've been sewing for Okay, so um, maybe we'll come back to Linda in a second. Um, we'll move on I don't to. I see Linda on here. Oh, maybe Linda left. Um, maybe we'll move on to Jessica. Uh, Jessica, if you could tell everyone um, where you're from and how long you've been sewing for. Hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm from Texas. Um, I have a teething seven-month-old on my lap. Sorry, 
Oh, that's okay. Um, I've been sewing for about two and a half years now also. Um, I started with a rag quilt um, from uh, Fleece Fun, and then I got turned on to Missouri Star, and then Sarah, and after that, um, I had a pattern for about two years before I actually <coughs> finally made one, so, and now I've just made everything since. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Jessica. All right, and Sarah, my fellow um, Chicago and Chicago area. Sarah, if, well, obviously I kind of spilled the beans on where you're from, but how long have you been sewing for? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you just great. I've been uh, sewing since I was a young girl many years ago. I won't say how many. My mother um, and both of my grandmothers sewed. And I mostly garments um, and bags, crafts, but I didn't understand what a good bag was until I found Sarah. <laughs> and we've met in uh, person several times because you've taken a bunch of my workshops before and you always have so many bags with you and they look so professional. So um, thank you. Yeah, they just I, look amazing. I love the bags that you design and, um, you know, it's no more green grocery bags and little puny bags for me. I have to have the good stuff now. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. All right, I think sure. we got through everyone that's currently in on the chat, so thanks for all of the introductions. And if anyone jumps on a little bit later, uh, we'll pop up with another introduction as well. So. Um, I wanted to ask, um, obviously, you know, feel free to sew while we're having this chat, but um, I wanted to ask what some of you are working on this weekend, and I saw Christina, I know Christina's kind of working on some assembly line stuff, so I was hoping Christina could share with us or show um, some things that she's working on. Um, I'm cutting out a whole bunch of moto pouches right now, so the fabric, uh, it's a backstitch woven that I'm cutting out. Um, using my super awesome template because corners are horrible. I am the queen of cut nicking my patterns when I go around corners. So I have an absolute love affair with these plastic templates because they're... Do you, do you use your rotary cutter of, when you use those or? I do. For something like this, I like this little guy. What is oh, this? Yeah. A 20? I have a small one too. Yeah. I, I have every size. So I mean, Danny's handing me mine. I have four different size rotary cutters. Oh, me too. My big one's downstairs, but there's no. three. So, <laughs> she said four. Yeah, I've oh, got four, four no, but I, I have find three. this is a, what is this? This one's a little 18 millimeter, which is uh, oh, wow. good for some really, small. really tiny stuff. Mine's only 28. Wow, yours must be so tiny. Well, no, I have a 28 as well. Okay. And a 45. <laughs> and a 60. Sounds like a gun collection. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> but for these smaller templates, I like the 28. Um, I use my 60 when I'm cutting foam on the fold because the 45 isn't quite enough to go through it. So I've right now I have cut out four bag stock everyday totes, 12 blue cala clematis clutches. I'm working on what will end up being 12 to 15 moto pouches. Um, probably a dozen I spies are on my list. I, I've got I've got a running list on my on my laptop of. And what these are I for a fair, do. right? These are for a fair. They are. How do In you, two how weeks. How do you decide? Um, how do you decide what projects you're going to make? Is it by past history of what people are buying or? Um, but that's part of it. Um, the other part is this is like a back to school thing. It's August 18th and 19th. So it's as kids are going back. So the I spies are great for pencils. Motos are great for pencils. Um, so those are kind of where I go for those. Clutches are always popular because they're not super expensive and there's a pretty good margin on them. Um, so I like whipping up a whole lot of those. They come together really, really, especially the Clematis. It's, a, it's one of Blue Callus free patterns. Um, so it comes together super quick. What do you price uh, that one at? Because I'm curious because you said it was uh, a good margin. Um, I price those at, because I have them all with, I, uh, they're all vinyl. So they're all vinyl. So um, they'll be 27. Oh, wow. That's really reasonable. 
Yeah, and the, well, the only hardware that's in them is a little D-ring, which I actually get those. They're the little half-inch ones. I get them at Home Depot and a lobster clasp. That's the only hardware. So it's a pretty good quick sew that you can do pretty well on. Um, if I have enough time, I'll probably do two or three more satellite bags. Um, those have been gaining huge amounts of interest. I've sold two custom ones already oh, cool. through my Etsy store. So um, those have been very, very popular. And then I will bring my Grinch bag that I did with I me. Grinch bag. <laughs> <laughs> I want that fabric to come in like now. The pre-order just closed and I want it like now. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what I'm working on. So I'm doing a whole lot of cutting and that's basically what I've been doing. Last night was fusing. So I was at my iron for three hours and tonight I'll switch off and I'll be cutting. And then tomorrow morning I'll do a few hours of fusing and then probably actually do some sewing finally. I actually like the cutting and fusing part. I don't know if anybody else in the group likes doing that or if you absolutely hate it, but I kind of, it's kind of relaxing. <laughs> I. I don't mind it. Um, there are times where I mind it. There are some bags um, that take forever. Um, the, oh, what's the name of it? It's another blue Cala pattern. It has like what feels like a thousand pieces. Um, so that one kind of makes me go, oh, do I really want to make another one of those? <laughs> it, it has a ton of pieces. Let me see, is it right here? Right here. Oh, it's the Speedwell. That's what it's called. Oh, so okay. it's a, oh, that one is, is really cool. Yeah, but it really does feel like it has a thousand pieces because the way the the oh, flap it's kind of opens. Deceiving. It doesn't look from the outside. It doesn't look like it's a huge. Oh, amount. but there's a gazillion. There's a gazillion pieces. But it's a fantastic bag. So, but it takes. It sews really quick. But it takes probably three times as long to cut out and fuse all of the pieces than it does to sew it. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. But it it's a fun bag to make. You just have to be really patient when you're cutting. <laughs> Michelle, what are you working on? Minikins? You know me way too well. <laughs> <laughs> Sugar, hey, yeah. Michelle, you want to tell everyone about the 100-day challenge? Uh, that you're working on? <laughs> um, all I know, well, from what I remember reading, is that it's for 100 days. Now, the girl who started it, wow, that light's really bright behind my head. It makes me look like I'm a shining star. Um, <laughs> it, no matter where I go, the light's going to be there. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Um, so um, you're supposed to have prepped or could have prepped every all your 100 minikins prior to this starting. I wasn't originally going to do it because I thought there's no way I can do one a day with everything else that I always squirrel about because I see something and then it's like a dog seeing a squirrel. I have to go do that instead. Um, I think I may have adult ADD. I think I might. Um, but you basically make one minikin per day for 100 days. And I think she had said that she wanted to do this because it'll give her a head start on her Christmas sewing, which I thought this is perfect because... I plan on making everybody sets this year, so I thought a jet oh, set wow. cinch bay, um, an I spy pouch, cotton can like something to make for traveling because when we travel, Ethan uses literally every one of his minikins that I made him. So he's got an I spy, he's got a binary pouch, he's got um, oh he uses the jet set cinch bag. He uses one of my uh, zeppelins that has like a black with white butterflies on it. He literally uses them all. Like, he gets so excited. He tells everybody where these bags came from. So I thought if an 11-year-old gets that excited, adults are going to get excited about it because oh, yeah. they're handy, you know? And, yeah, so I thought I'm going to give it a whirl. Even if I don't get the 100 done, then I tried and I'll have some gifts done. My problem is is um, I'm a bit impatient and I like to give people their stuff early. So the Danny is the action... same exact way and it makes me so irritated. Sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I can't help it. It's just like I get so excited knowing I made so somebody I. something. And I'm, well, not, I, didn't I just like I'm getting such a great gift. I'm like, oh, I got to choose such a great gift. I have to give it to you right away. And I'm always like, my gift is going to be the best gift you're going to get all Christmas. Like, yeah. I'm telling you, it's the best <laughs> gift ever. High five, Michelle. I'm just going to get a high five right now. <laughs> 
bitch. <laughs> Oh, so it yeah, so mad. As soon as the thing comes in the mail, Danny gives it whoever it is. Here's your gift. Here's your present. Even if Christmas I, is two I weeks away. It up, at least so he gets to open it. <laughs> and you know what's funny is it's like people would be, oh, what do you want for Christmas? And like nothing. I honestly don't want anything. I really just want to make things for people. I love, especially the children, right? I love making gifts for children. I love doing it. Like I used to do um, a donation of cupcakes every month to Ronald McDonald House here in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. I would donate 250 cupcakes almost every month, and then my accident oh my happened. And I had to, yeah, I had to, I had to slow it down. Luckily, they're very understanding, so anytime I can, I still will. Um, but while I did that, I used to make headbands, like the big bows. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make headbands for the little girls because there's so many children who are going through cancer, and it was a great eye opener for my children too to see that when you complain about you know, you fell down and you hurt yourself. There's children who are in the hospital who may not get out to have Christmas with their family. Sorry, it makes me sad because my nephew was one of them who was in there. And so, yeah, so for me, it's giving back to people who need it. Even though we may not be the richest family, we have things that we can, I have things that I can still do. I can sew, I can make cupcakes, I can make these headbands, I can make, you know, so now I'm thinking of doing um, some pouches up actually to give Toronto McDonald House for the little kids. Cause I thought how cute would it be a little girl carrying around like a little purse or a little guy carrying around a little pencil case, right? So I can't do the cupcakes anymore because of the fine, mo fine motor skills, but I can do this. So if I can get enough done before Christmas, I'll ship them off to the manager and just say, when you do your Christmas party, um, which is usually the middle of December and actually the U.S. Marines come and I've met them and some of them are mighty fun. Um, <laughs> it's the uniform, Michelle. It oh is the my God. And one they of them was like playing with my son one year. So there I am like snapping pictures and I'm like, oh, this is just for later. You're so cute. I have to show everybody this. Oh my God. Um, I'm married. I'm not buried. What's that? Said, they I show up at, at hockey spot. games. <laughs> it's, it's, you're married. You're married. You're not buried. Come on. Um, oh, I, I say I'm married. I'm not dead. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like the married, not buried. And I can't take that and say I came up with that. That's from um, Bob's Burgers. Jean said that. So we watch a lot of Bob's Burgers. Um, so anyways, yeah, I don't know how we got on that topic. But yes. Oh, yeah. So trying to do the 100 days. So you basically make one of them a, a day. So I'm thinking of tying that in as well, because 100 is a lot. I won't need that many, but if I can get it done and I can do it. So that's kind of my motivation right now to, to get them done, provided my machine won't do what it did the other day to me and decide to have a temper tantrum where I'm going to throw it against a wall. Um, but I just thought, you know what, it's a great way to back when I can't do what I used to do anymore. So And I miss doing it because I used to love going there to their because they used to invite me and the children to their little Christmas party and... So I kind of miss doing that. I miss being able to feel like I was part of something, something bigger than, you know, just giving something. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's okay. Not I'm saying that it's wrong for people to just give something, but I, I was taking part in something that hit close to home for me, especially. So if I can get these done, I'd really like to be able to bring them to Ronald McDonald House and give them some of them. I haven't told them yet, but I'm sure they'll they'll totally appreciate it. And I just thought, how cute would it be to see all the little kids running around with, you know, the little bags and purses and stuff at Christmas time. How did you start with Ronald McDonald House? And are there certain things? Did you have to check what, what kind of things you could donate? Did they have uh, requirements or anything like that? Or how, how does that work? So, you know what's funny? I don't remember how I got started. Um, so I had been making cakes well, my mother used to make cakes when I was younger. She used to make, like, I'm talking cakes that were as big as me. So I basically made cakes and candies my whole life. And then I gave it up and I got back into it when Ethan was born because he has multiple allergies. He's got nuts, pineapples. I mean, you name it, the kid's a walking, talking allergy. So um, I ended up, I don't know how I got in contact with them, but I ended up getting an email and then we went back and forth. And the the the... Carol is her name. I ended up saying, you know, I really want to be able to give cupcakes because I know my, my sister-in-law had stayed at Ronald McDonald House and I kind of wanted to give something back. So we went back and forth and, you know, you just have to be careful of the nut allergies. I had given them gluten-free ones too. So children who had gluten-free allergies could still enjoy a cupcake. Um, 
that was basically it was just making sure I was nut free because of all the nut allergies, which is was easy enough because Ethan, we can't have anything nuts here. So they knew that it was very safe. Um, and that was it. They always wanted to offer to pay me. And I used to say, no, 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 I don't want your money. I just strictly want to do this because you can't put a price on knowing that you've made a child's day sweeter through a cupcake. You've made a child happy just by a cupcake and hearing how excited they get when I'd walk in the door with, you know, 250 cupcakes. You know, you see how excited these children get. Again, you can't put a price on that. It, it just, it made it all that much better doing it. And my children, especially Ethan, really got into it and he really loved it. And he's like, when you die, and I'm like, dude, are you already writing me off? Like, <laughs> but he's like, when you die, I want to keep doing this. I want to continue it on and I want to carry on your, your name. And I thought, you know what? Like, again, it's all about the learning experiences, right? And it's all about what we can teach our children. And when you have something that somebody else doesn't have, why not share it? You know, it's yeah. it's a great way to make somebody's day better. And like I said, these children, they're there. And it's it's awful that they have to be going through this. They're so young. Children shouldn't, nobody should have to go through it. But children, especially at that age, should not have to go through it. And like I said, if giving them a cupcake is going to make them forget for those moments what's going on in their life, then that's amazing. It, it gives me... It gives me a high. It's like I helped a child feel better if even for a few seconds while they devoured that cupcake. You know, they were able to forget about they're not in a hospital and just feel like they're still part of the real world in a sense, you know. So I don't remember how I got doing it, but I'm really sad that I can't continue it anymore. So that's why I really want to do the minikins and bring them in and give them to them. And yeah. Wow, that's a really good goal for the 100 day challenge. I, yeah, wow. You're so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to let Ethan try sewing some. Like, even the desktop tubes, I figured it's fairly easy. It's just straight sewing. Yeah. I figured he can do it on days when I'm not feeling well, maybe, or even get him, like, cutting them out. Trevor's like, you're going to have it like a child workshop down here. And I'm like, well, <laughs> it's only one child, so not really. But maybe I'll have Michaela, like, fusing or something. <laughs> And actually, so what I'm working on tonight is a, another um, jet set cinch bay um, to match the Lindsay tote that I made last night. And I'm telling you, Trevor's heading for a divorce. That guy, he <laughs> he's like, how many bags do you have now? And I'm like, shh, don't talk about how many I have. And he's like, do you seriously need a bag for everything you do in life? He's like, that needs to be Sarah's slogan, a bag for everything in life. He's like, literally, you have a bag to go to the bathroom with. And I'm like, actually, I don't, but that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, they so definitely he's like, start to accumulate over the years, for sure. <laughs> well, that's what I said. I'm having a hard time deciding which one to bring with us on our trip because I'm like, okay, I've taken my Renegade, I've taken my Lucky Denver Mint, I've taken my jun Urban Jungle. I'm like, okay, I haven't taken my Baker Street bag. And Michaela hasn't taken her Oriole. So I'm like, okay, what do I bring? Do I just bring them all? But I don't know if there's enough room in our trunk with all the other stuff we have to bring. <laughs> Did you see the Jet Set Cinch uh, hack the lady turn into a backpack? Yeah, that one. Uh, cool. Oh my God! Yes. Wasn't that cool? Wow. I didn't even realize it was that pattern at first when I looked at it. I was like, "Wow, that's really cool." And then I read the description. And I was like, "Wow, no way." There's some people who do some really awesome stuff. They do some really awesome hacks, and I'm like, I'm just, I don't, I guess I'm just not that creative to be able to think that far outside the box. But that's incredible. I, I, I loved it. It was awesome. I'm like, felt like messaging her and saying, "Can you make me one?" <laughs> <laughs> Not that I need any more bags, honestly, but <laughs> pretty sure I have enough. I think I did a count and I've made, I think it was like over 80 bags just oh since, gosh. just since October. Oh my gosh. Shh, don't tell Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> and I think probably a good 40 of them are just here in this house, maybe even more. I'm not even kidding. That's like my closet looks like a bag graveyard. That's what he calls it because there's all these bags on top. So what I've gotten doing, I've gotten really crafty and I start shoving bags inside bags so it doesn't do look quite too. as bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you do this, what, that? I've had this forever. What are you talking about? I do that with clothes, right, Danny? <laughs> Oh now the thing is, is I'm buying fabric and making clothes now. So now I'm like, how do I sneak more yeah, how do you sneak the fabric in without them seeing, especially when you share the same bank account? 
<laughs> we have separate bank yeah, accounts, so we have separate accounts. I can purchase at will. <laughs> I, I used to I used to be able to just go and buy things at Walmart and just add it into the Walmart bill when he wasn't around. But <laughs> Fabricland doesn't really scream Walmart. You don't really get milk at Fabricland, so Yeah. <laughs> I saw two more people jump on while while Michelle and I were chatting. So um, if Louise is still on, Louise, if you want to introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, how long you've been sewing for, if you're still on. Or I saw I saw Stitching Maniac jump on. Stitching Maniac, if you're still on, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my my name is Terry. Hi, um, I've been sewing since I let me see. I took a 4-H class, I think I was in like fourth grade, and um, I started off with the, the 4-H class for the sewing was, we made um, pin cushions, and I actually still have that pin cushion, and I actually have it right here on the side of my oh, sewing. I see it. Oh my, oh my gosh. Okay, so let me see if I can. So it's right. Oh, I see it. Right, right there. So it actually oh. it goes on your wrist. That's got a little elastic. Oh, I mean, yeah, it, I see the elastic. Yeah, it's got an elastic on it, and so that's where I keep my pins. That's Sorry. That's amazing that you still have that. Yep. There was two things I had. My mother had one, and then I had that pin cushion. So um, I sewed a lot of clothes in that 4-H class, and then as I got older, I stopped sewing. And then I had my son, well, before I had my son, I made all, started making all my maternity clothes. And I never was a quilter. I was never, a, like, a bag maker. I was always a um, garment sewer. And then um, probably six years ago, I made my first quilt. And it's I never finished it, but it's ridiculously, like, I didn't know about the quarter inch seam. I didn't know about pressing. I didn't know anything. I still have it but I don't show it to anybody. And so now I've been making bags and um, and I mostly I, I sell bags to my family. <laughs> That's awesome. So, story. I wish, you know, you, you mentioned you learned to sew in home ec. I wish, I don't know if they still, or sorry, 4-H, I don't know if they still have that where you live, but um, when I was in school, they didn't have home ec, and I kind of wish they did because not just for the crafty stuff like sewing, but just the everyday learning how to do basic things that I think a lot of younger people don't know how to do now. Like, sorry to call you out, Danny, but my husband, you know, he's not. Uh, I'm muting the mic. Stop. He my have daughter a lot of experience with chores and doing household things. I'm um, sorry. Go ahead. My daughter doesn't even know how to put a doesn't didn't even know how to sew a button on anything. And my son took um, home ec in when he was in a freshman in high school okay. and he made this um, uh, fleece hat. Of course he gave it to his girlfriend and his mother. So I don't have his, his only one thing he's ever sewed, but they, they would switch at that time. They would switch home ec with um, oh, what they call it. Um, would, the would boys. Take, yeah. The boys okay. would take one and then the girls would take home ec and then they would switch. Okay. So both had to take it in their freshman year, but they don't even they don't do that anymore. But yeah. Well, it's I'm good to be exposed to that. to that kind of thing. My aunt's doing a lot of work with woodworking right now and it's it's great to have some sort of crafty thing that you can do with your hands, I think. Even if it's not sewing, even if it's something else. Yeah. Something. Yeah. yeah. I had they called it industrial arts when I was in middle school. That's what they called it. Oh, yeah, so industrial I've never art. Heard that term before. Interesting. Yeah. Where are you from? Me? Yeah. <laughs> do I do I have an accent? <laughs> no, because it's Maine. Maine is from the same place, probably. <laughs> no, I, well, I'm Not from Massachusetts, so that must be a New England way yep. of, of yeah. putting it. Yes. So. By the way, Sarah and Danny, when are you coming to vacation to Maine? Ooh, okay, now I, <laughs> <laughs> that, now I hear it. Now I hear it. Look on the map right now. See how far it is. It's a little bit. Oh What's God, the, Maine is beautiful. What are your favorite things to do in Maine? Um, the, well, you can go to the ocean. We so you can go to the ocean. Um, of course, you can have lobster. Um, 
That goes without saying. Ever had no, we haven't. Mm. There's um, nothing like Maine lobster. Yeah. Does it taste like chicken? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> So my right. sister comes up from North Carolina, I swear. She comes up for a week or so. She has lobster every day. Wow. Um, I come up from Florida, and these jokers down here call these things that have no claws down here lobster, and I laugh at them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> because that's not lobster. So I go and visit my stepmother, and she knows that there's like three places that we're hitting when I'm up there. There needs to be steamers. There needs to be lobster, and then there's a local restaurant that needs to happen every time I go up there. Yeah, what's a steamer? Clams. Clams. Oh, I've not <laughs> had that before either. Yep. So, Sarah, or, as, or as we say in Massachusetts, I go and I have steamers <laughs> and lobster. <laughs> so, I was at the Maine had a quilt show the last weekend in July and I found these little um they're by Sally Tomato and these these are the buckles Can you see those oh. I'm gonna get I'm gonna I made a purse out of them I'm gonna go grab the purse and I'll be oh, right yeah. back I'm curious to see how that goes on the back because I can't visualize it just look are those the it. strap anchors <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that I had my um, a dress on and I wasn't being very ladylike. Okay, so there's the strap, and then you put those that you you it has the prongs on it like a magnetic snap. like a snap prong that you would put in, and so put them in. Th there's the buckle right there, or I don't know what's called. Not a buckle. It's a it's a loop strap connector. That's what it's okay. called. Where's the prongs? You put it on the, are the prongs on the bottom part, like where it's curved? So, I didn't, so this right here, the prongs are right here. I just oh, haven't I bent them out. Now. I see. Oh, those are big prongs. Okay. I so see. I, let me see. Look. Yeah. There. The prong is right, right there. Oh. And then you stick them in the bag. And then you stick them through the through the through the bag right on the outside, and then you have these little. Um, oh, I see. You have these little these things that okay. the prongs go into. Yeah. Whoops. Okay. And then, then you hook your straps to it. I thought they were the coolest things. I really like that, and I like well the the prongs are in a good spot because it it's carrying the weight you know of yeah where you're hooking it onto the side of the bag yeah and that's so really I asked cool. the woman I said how, where did you ever find these and she she's a pattern designer she makes um she's actually from Maine what the heck is her name uh two sisters the two sisters oh auntie's two sisters is the name of the 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 um com the, her company okay and this Sally Tomato actually came to her and said, hey, you want to try making some of these with your bags? And so they kind of like, she sells her patterns and she has her, her these little buckles. But it's Sally Tomato is the name of the... Okay. That is really awesome. Yeah. And I think they had different sizes, but I, when I bought one of her patterns and I bought everything from her to make this one pattern... Yeah, and they're they're quite um, you know, they're not they're not by any means um, flimsy. They're quite sturdy. I mean, can you hear that? It does look like it. Yeah, it looks like it's sturdy. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Thanks for yeah. sharing that. I always like when people share different things that I haven't seen before. And you said that's called a strap anchor. Is that what you said it was called? They're they're, they're Textured loop strap connectors and loop strap connectors. Her website is Sally to S A L L I E tomato dot com. Okay. Yeah, those and are And then nice. it says there's a free assembly instructions and tutorial. Okay. Cool. I have to write that down. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Uh, 
Louisa was asking before. She said she couldn't figure out how to unmute her mic. Okay. Uh, tell her if she could tap the screen, and I think on the left side will be the microphone mute, and it should pop up. I got there. it. There oh, you got go. it. Hey, Great. Louisa. You yes. want to introduce yourself to everyone? Hi. Tell us where you're from. How long you've been sewing for? Hi, uh, my name is Luisa. I'm from Brazil, and I've been sewing for about five years, I think. Nice. I, I see you're in your sewing room. I see all the threads behind you on the wall. Yeah, and I have my... Oh. <laughs> my monster here. Oh, oh what's his name? He's sewing with me. Oh, he's beautiful. <gasps> yeah. I have three of them, and they are really not quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the dog in the bear commercial, Sarah. Do you remember it was Spuds McKenzie? Yeah, I do. I yeah. do. Oh, he's beautiful. I don't know this one. <laughs> now he's running. <laughs> are you working I on like anything this? special this weekend? I started... Uh, I don't know the name. I think it's the Orioli bag. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're almost done. Yeah, I don't have the strap material, so oh. <laughs> I have to wait. I think it's the Oslo too. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it's the. But it's, it's the kind leather. of big. Oh, leather hobo bag. I like the pink fabric you used in that uh, Oreo bag. I like it. It's nice and bright. Um, it, it's red, actually. Oh, red. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I see now. Yeah, I yeah. it looks lipstick, right? So what time is it in Brazil right now? 9.36 p.m., okay. of course. P.m., okay. Yeah. Not too late. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not too late. I sleep about midnight every day, so it's kind of early. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I like to go to bed early, right, Danny? Like yeah. Sarah you used to stay up till midnight, one a.m. every night with me, and then she started uh, getting old and stopped doing it. <laughs> I would love to, but I can't. Yeah, me either. <laughs> uh, we don't want to talk about my sleeping habits, right, Sarah? Oh yeah, sometimes Danny, my husband, uh, three three a.m., four a.m. Uh, I wake up in the middle of the night, he's still down here watching TV, or I don't know how he stays up so late, but. I've mocked, kind of sleeping. Yeah. I've mocked Annie's sleeping habits in the messages of my orders. I told Sarah, Sarah's because she sees him through emails. I'm like, you know, Chrissy is like, Danny, you really need to get some sleep. And I'm like, <laughs> I try to get sleep, it just doesn't work. <laughs> I order and I leave Danny messages in the in the in in my orders. You know the way I look at it is if you can't sleep, you might as well be productive and get stuff done, right? I mean, that's why I'm printing orders so late at night. I'm like, I might as well print orders and like watch a Netflix show or something. <laughs> I think that's when I placed an order one time, wasn't it? At like one thirty or two o'clock in the morning. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's a bad time to shop. You know that, eh? <laughs> it's funny we get orders. <laughs> really bad night. time. It's it's, it's a. <laughs> So it's like, that's when you really, you're like tired and you're like, oh, I shouldn't get this. Oh, forget it. I'm just going to get it and I'll figure it out tomorrow. <laughs> and then you wake up and you're like, crap, I didn't even get everything I wanted. Now I got to go do another order. Yeah, you get a lot of emails oh. like that. It's like they, someone will order an item. Then maybe an hour later, like, hey, can you combine the shipping with this one? The best bet if anyone has ever had that issue, cancel your first order and just restart a new order. It's not going to, we're not going to ship it. If you didn't get an email saying it's shipping, you don't have to worry about it. Because once we go to ship it, you'll get an email right away saying it's being shipped. You shouldn't have told me that. That's, <laughs> that's enabling my problem, shipping. Danny. I don't want to charge double shipping or make you get something twice that you don't need to. Sarah, how are you doing with your embroidery machine? <laughs> Same thing as my 3D printer, zero. <laughs> We've, oh, we've so the reason why I'm stuff. asking, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. The, I started making um, um, dog collars. And so on the inside of the collar, I've been putting a tag that says the dog's name. And then if my, my, um, my owner's name is, call this number. But I've been printing it off on my printer. 
and I've had one on my dog, and I took him swimming, and I'm just afraid that the at some point that the um, lettering is going to come off from the printer. You know, I did all the things. You know, I washed it after I. I'm using that. Um, you know, the fabric that you get that you can print on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then you're supposed to wash it afterwards to get the ink and stuff to to stay. So I was wondering how you were doing on your embroidery machine because I would rather embroidery on the tag That's than what I was print it when you were talking. Printer. Yeah, we haven't done gotten much progress. I admit summer's been a little tricky because our work schedule's a little bit uh, all over the place. Like because the kids want to do things or we have something scheduled in the middle of the day and darn um, kids. <laughs> It's not like it was during the school year, and so we have to sort of fit things in when we can. And I mean, it's fine, but we, the embroidery machine has unfortunately fallen sort of lowest on the totem pole. But um, yeah, I could play see with it. it. It's fun. I know. I know it's fun. I just I bought shirts to embroider, and they're just sitting there in my corner over there. <laughs> Make sure you're using the right stabilizer on them, or they're gonna pucker. Yeah, our first one had puckering. It's probably because we didn't have the right stabilizer. You didn't what use any stabilizer? No, we probably did not have the right one. Uh, you want to use, uh, yeah, you want to use tearaway. I mean, I'm sorry, you don't want to use tearaway. That's what we had. That's what we had. That's what we had. Yeah, you want to use cutaway. If you wear it, don't tear it. Oh, Makes nice rhyme. Right there. there you go. <laughs> no, I made. Uh, what did I do? Six sanitizer holders the other night. Oh, can we see them? They're not oh, those done. Are super I, cool. I haven't cut them out. They're still sitting on the stabilizer. But uh, one of them uh, burped when it <laughs> did the last bit. So I'm going to see if I can salvage it. But these are uh, Pokemon. Oh, yeah, oh, cool. cool. Look so awesome. I've got a I've got a Janome 350E, so I've got a 4x4 and a 5x7 hoop, so I can do two of these uh, sanitizer holders in the 5x7 hoop. Uh, it's Disney Snacks. Oh, cool. And this is all your vinyl. It's all my, my scrap vinyl. And then the fairies from Sleeping Beauty and another little coffee scrap. So those all just need to be cut out and put cam snaps on them. I can imagine you going in front of like an elementary school and just selling those to every like parent because the kid's going to see them and want them right away. Oh yeah, for sure. That's my kids are so they're much coming, into hand cleaners like those. They're yeah. coming into my. They're coming with me to my fair. There'll be little uh, little things to hang up. So all of the leftover vinyl as I'm cutting out the bags and everything, I throw on the embroidery machine. That's smart. How how many are you bringing of those sanitizers to the fair? As many as I can get done before I go. Okay. I bought 30, 30 hand sanitizers from a Bath and Body Works sale. So no more than 30 because that's what I have for sanitizers. Oh, okay. So they get the sanitizer too. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'll sell those for $8. Okay. That's worth it. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Worth it. And it hey, Christina. Yes. If you can't get that one fix that puckered, I know somebody who likes that. <laughs> oh, the it didn't pucker. So the the underside, so the pocket. So let me grab it. So the way that these work is um, there's this little pocket on the back, which of course is hard to see because it's the same. But there's this is where you actually slide the sanitizer into. So because you're putting something in here, you don't want to use um, spray base, which is what I use on the rest of it to hold it down. So I just scotch taped it. So on that one, the tape got caught on the machine as the hoop was moving. So it just kind of made it go off on a, in a weird direction. So I'll see how it looks when I cut it out. And if it still looks funky, I'll throw it in with your cat lady fabric, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, you know me, I'm like a germaphobe, so the more hand sanitizers, the better. So I basically, know. We, I, we had that conversation the other day. I even made <laughs> Michaela carry one in her pouch, in her purse. I have Ethan have one in his EpiPen slash asthma pump pouch because it's like, keep your, your ugh, cooties away from me. It's like, nope, sharing's not caring. I love you all, but go sanitize before you touch me if you've been outside. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been outside. <laughs> 
Hey, I'm just amazed that Michaela actually didn't steal your keychain. That's no, all. look, look at, hang on, hang on. Can you see it? It, it froze. Oh, there it oh. Goes. You froze. No, it, you got it. Can you see it? Go down oh, a yeah, little bit. I see it, I see it. So when I was unpackaging the package that you sent me, she was like, oh, who's this from? And she's looking at the fabric. Then she claimed the Minnie Mouse fabric, like, instantly. And then she saw that, and she's like, oh, that's for me? And I'm like, uh, yeah, hands off, but I don't think so. That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, why is it that everything that comes in this house is for them? I don't understand. No, it's for me. Can I just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like little thieves, I'm telling you. They take everything, everything. Your money, your gifts. Everything. It's gone. Your sanity. <laughs> and the scary thing is, is Michelle told me straight up when I told her that I sent her one, she said, Michaela's going to try to steal it because she loves it. <laughs> well, because she goes around, her and her friends have this Grinch club where green is now their favorite color and they all say that the Grinch is their captain and they all love the Grinch and they go around saying they Grinch you, which is... I don't know what that all means, but that anybody who they Grinch is basically in this secret Grinch club. I'm like, oh, I can't keep up with this stuff. It's like Fortnite. I can't keep up with all this. And and I'm, I'm that mom who hates the game, but yet I enabled him and went and ordered Fortnite fabric because somebody posted about it in the group. And was like, yeah, but I didn't just stop at one yard. I ended up getting two because I'm like, well, you know, got to have a matching bag for him. So maybe I'll make him the Cumberland backpack too. I'm like, <laughs> like, today he's sitting here playing it while I'm sewing and Trevor comes home and he's like, you haven't throttled him yet? That's annoying. Like, I've only been here for a minute and I already want to like freak. I'm like, you just learn to tune it out. You just sing in your head or... <laughs> Act like he's not there. <laughs> Talk to yourself. That's what Sarah does when I game. She's sitting over there, I think. So, like, well, along those lines. Oh, I see another person's oh. wanting to join. Tammy. Hey, Tammy. How you doing? All right, so we're just sitting here. Oh, I meant to ask everyone. So I am slowly starting to cut out fabric for some more videos, and I was working on cutting the um, Lilium laptop bag. So I am wanted to get opinions on fabric. Should I go with the darker one for the body of the bag or the the lighter one? Light Which one. one do you like better? Light one? I like They're the dark, but I, I, don't, I, I don't like doing light bags because dirt. I'm with Christina. Yeah, I was about to say that. Well, I might not ever, ever use it because one. I have so many. Shelf back there. Yeah, it might be just sitting on the shelf. So. <laughs> and the light is pretty. <laughs> the lighter's pretty. Okay. <laughs> I like the lighter. The lighter one, Sarah. Very lighter one. It's pretty. Okay. I like the blue one. You like well, the darker one, me? Danny? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'll make it for you then, since you like the the darker one. Danny, would you like to carry a bag with the flowers on it? Uh, yes. Of course. Yes. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Sarah, what are you working on? I see you uh, holding some fabric over there. Oh, in, I took um, class through the guild with Gudrun Erla. No, this one was at Thimbles. Okay. And I'm doing her um, lupine quilt. Lup lupine quilt. Okay. So that's I'm. I've got so many unfinished projects. So, of course, that doesn't is everyone the lighter. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. So, I'm not doing purple. Mine's going to be like a firecracker. Oh, cool. Is so that, that with of course, a, like a jelly roll or? No. I, I um, actually bought her uh, ruler, but I, I have put her the square. Too. Do you? Which one did you get? I got the, I think it's Stripology. Let me see if, it, I can pull it out. It's right here. Hey, Tammy. Okay, here's hey. the one I have. I have trouble. Oh, I wanted to get that. The long one. So, I got the shorter one, the square and the square. Okay, so if anyone's not familiar with these rulers, it has little slits every half inch, so you can cut, well, my particular is 
from zero oh, wait, to twenty I... inches. Oh. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, wait, the first time I've shirt. ever had real accurate cutting, and I've used it to square up blocks. So um, I'm real happy with it. I'm glad I spent the dollars. Yeah, it's worth it. I had a different one before, but it kind of cracked. And I couldn't use it. I think it cracked on one end. So um, I bought this one instead, and I like it better because it's it's longer. <laughs> okay, so which brand are those? I just looked, and I'm like, oh, wait, I have um, something like that. But this one's a June Taylor. This one's I have Creative Grids. Grids. It's the Stripology. Okay. I think this one's every half inch. Yeah, mine is too. Did I say, but it's Did I say something different? Hey, you I'm may have said half inch. But it's really okay. nice when I'm cutting binding when I do a quilt because I can just put... Mm -hmm. I'll hold one on because I do two and a half inch bindings because I'm quarters. not super two accurate. Two and three quarters. Two and three quarters for binding for you, Tammy? Yep, that's what I like to use. I had the worst technical difficulty and I, I do this every day of my life. It should have been easy for me to get logged in. So. Oh, no, Sorry about you're fine. No, you're messages fine. Down. Never use this app. Um, so, Tammy, where are you from, and how long have you been sewing for? Well, I don't think you hear the twang, right? Everyone <laughs> says I have an accent. I don't hear it. I am from North Carolina. I live right on the border um, in the bottom right-hand corner of the state, so um, near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, um, near Wilmington, North Carolina, if you're familiar with either of those two places. Um, I travel a lot for work. I'm a nurse and work for a company out of Kansas City, Missouri. So I've been able to make a few trips over to Missouri Star and over to Liberty to see um, Angela Walters, which was pretty cool, which you'll see is probably my little icon, my image on my profile. Um, anyways, so I don't get to sew as much as I like, um, but I do stay out here. If you notice, don't look at my cup. I sleep out here in my sewing room a lot. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I'm out here a lot, and thank you, Sarah. I now own a Juki. Thank you so much. Oh, awesome. How do you like it? I love it, but I've said this to you before in messages where you always say that you don't, you know, you're not affiliated or you don't get paid, but you really should because I think most, if not all of us, always run out and buy what you do. Oh. <laughs> I, have, I have lots of things that you have. I feel like a copycat, but anyways. Um, well, I love you like this it. Group. Is there anything that you don't like about the machine or is no. it kind of fit your needs no. pretty much? There's nothing that I dislike. I really, really, really love the knee um, bar to lift the presser foot. And I love the um, um, the pedal, the cut, cutting feature on the pedal. Me too. Love I'm, it. I'm love so it. happy that you like it. Yeah, I, you know, I, I almost feel better about recommending things that and knowing that nobody's paying me to do so because I feel like it's more of an honest... Like, I can just be honest and say, you know, if I like it or if I don't like it. And I feel like it's more believable that way. So, anyway, that's just. I think all of us know that you have great integrity, you and Danny both. But I think that these companies should be doing something for you because, obviously. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Certainly. I saw Danny. I think Amanda just yes, jumped Amanda. on. Hi, Amanda. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Um, would you mind introducing yourself, where you're from, um, maybe how long you've been sewing, just to everyone that's watching live? Yeah, so I'm Amanda. I'm from Maryland. We've lived here about five years, originally from Ohio. So I like to still say I'm from Ohio, but <laughs> um, I've only been sewing for about three months now. Oh, wow. So, what made yeah, you decide so, to start sewing? Was there something particular? Um, well, my mom has always sewed, and I figured if she can do it, so can I. <laughs> um, and then, uh, my husband recently deployed, so I was looking for something to fill my time while he was gone. So <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. here I am. What but was you sound very... like my sister? <laughs> my sister did the same thing. Yeah. So what was it's your working very... out so far? <laughs> what was your very first project that you ever sewed? Um, I made like a, a tote bag. So I, I didn't realize that there was like such a strong sewing community out there. So I went to Pinterest. And then from there, I, you know, started with the simple things and I learned how to put in a zipper. And from there it was like, well, I can do anything now. Yeah. So, um, and then I found you and that's kind of just, I 
stick to your patterns now, but. Oh, thank you. <laughs> for now, I mean, you know, I find others that I like, but I bought the minikins and I love them. And so just go from there. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And I saw Colleen just jumped on too. Hey, Colleen. Maybe we'll check in with Colleen in like just a second. Oh, okay, Danny says she's trying to unmute herself. <laughs> I was trying to unmute myself. Hey. Oh, hey. How are you doing, Colleen? Would you mind introducing yourself since we uh, are technical difficulty free this month? Uh, introducing yourself to everyone, where you're from, how long you've been sewing for? Um, I guess I've been sewing since I was probably five when I got my first sewing box. Wow. And I'm in Louisville, North Carolina, so in the middle of the state. And uh, I'm sewing on an anniversary quilt tonight. I printed, well, over a hundred pictures of my parents. I asked my mom to doubt to to scan 50 and she scanned 105. <laughs> and uh, I'm making an anniversary quilt with them and table toppers. And I, since I learned how to sew a geranium dress for my two-year-old niece, I'm making her a dress with this fabric as well. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's for and sure I made a keepsake dress. I made a label too at Spoonflower. Oh, that's really cute. Uh, yeah, I love Spoonflower for labels and printing things and super cool. But anyway, hey everybody, that's what I'm doing tonight. Hello, fellow North Korean. Hello, hello. Tammy, what are you knitting over there? Or crocheting? I don't know what the correct I'm terminology is. Thinking. A friend of mine that I work for wants me to make four of these Ooh. blankets Whoa. for her for Christmas. And they have four panels of the hearts, which are quite challenging to make with this chunky. And then five panels of the solid. So how can I sew anything for myself when I'm always telling people, sure, I'll do that for you. Oh, oh my God. Did you see when Sarah's face like... Hey, Sarah, can you make me a quilt? Uh, and I'm thinking in my head, yeah, Sarah's got time to make you a quilt because she's got time to make me a quilt. I'm her husband, dang it. Well, I've got quilts to make for people. I've got a quilt to quilt on my long arm. I've got um, this to make and these four to make, plus somebody else wants me to make some stuff for their baby, and I never say no to people. And then hey, I stress uh, it. Will you do my That's why it's my law. for me? <laughs> all right danny so here's what we need to do i need to have my husband ask sarah to make him something and then i'll make you something oh, and then both nice. of our husbands will be happy because oh. i have the same issue <laughs> That's and then we have my husband who says stop making so much stuff <laughs> My husband wants a sling bag, much like Danny does, oh, in the worst way, but he can't find a pattern that will fit his um, his Chromebook, and I am not confident enough to start enlarging patterns. Good question. How challenging is it for people to enlarge patterns? Because I see people in the group, and I wonder yeah. if it's difficult or hard or what. I've I don't find it that bad. Whoever is sewing, you should mute. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Um, if you're, if, like, if you have the TV on or um, you're sewing, uh, feel free to mute your yourself. And then if you have something to say, obviously you can unmute yourself and then mute it back again. Um, I don't know. I've not personally. I don't think I've ever enlarged a pattern, so I I couldn't say. Um, I don't have first-hand knowledge. I mean, I could tell you the steps to do it, but. At your retreat, someone enlarged the aeroplane bag. That's she right. She just added inches, I think. Didn't she, where someone she drank one down too? Vanessa made a tiny one, and someone else made a humongous one of the airplane yeah. bag. I feel, like sh I feel like shrinking would be a heck of a lot easier than enlarging, especially with some of these, um, these sling bags have a lot of pieces. So when you start dealing with pattern pieces and trying to enlarge them by like 150%, how are you getting that to fit on paper? How is it going to, fit, yeah, you know? What I have to do is I have to, um, I need, Sorry, in the line has wine Oh, how do you bag. know what, which person that is? Their microphone lights up. Oh, okay. On the right side, there's a little microphone and we're getting like, something like Alvin the Chipmunks almost sound. Okay, let me see. Where, Danny? I 
No, no, we were hearing it. I could see your mic light up when I heard the sounds. You see that? Okay. I'll, I'll, um, yep, I'll mute it. Okay. Is it something you're watching, maybe? No, if there's nothing on in here. I turned it off. That's weird. But I'll mute, I'll mute maybe that'll fix it. Okay. Yeah, here's feel free to unmute yourself then if you, whenever you want to talk again. Yeah. Here, oh, there's the picture. picture. Of my oh, bag is, in, is the regular size. The, the the ginormous one that she enlarged is the one behind it. And then the little one is 50%. And that's all aeroplane bag. Whoops. <laughs> and that's my alarm. <laughs> that's such a big Sorry. difference. And it's so funny to see them lined up like that. Yeah. yeah. It's like bag family. Literally. Yeah, it is. It is, it is like a, the, three, the three bears or something. So I'm so not that big of an enlarger. So any Unrind has this wine bag that you can put a couple of bottles of wine in and in a glass, and it has this little insert that pulls out. Well, I can show it to you. So this is the bag. Okay. And it has um. Actually, there's. <laughs> they're empty. I had to have. I don't drink wine, so I had to have my neighbor does and. She oh. actually gave them to me, and it has a little insert that comes out. Okay. And so she does insert, and so you, it has four, let's see, okay. four compartments. And so my neighbor asked me to make one, and she brought me over the bottles, and I didn't realize that this is the normal size bottle that I'm aware of. She came back with one that's like this big around, and oh it's. <laughs> A liter, a liter a yeah. liter versus the 750 yeah. milliliter so this bag is made so i what i had to do is i had to make the bag and then make one to enlarge right alongside it so i could figure out which pieces need to be enlarged and so i'm not that great at it but really it really came out nice you sound like a great neighbor yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> my bottles back so they don't get broken <laughs> and I actually I really like the bag I mean I made a couple from, um my sister-in-law I think has bought in like four for her friends so that's a really cool bag does it come together pretty quickly um it does there's a part on it where the zipper on the, t on the zipper when you put the attach the zipper on the top mm. you have to like um unzip the zipper it, it, it's almost like you're like breaking the zipper but you're really not you have to unzip it and then fold it uh, the zipper part is challenging just one this the, the the corners but other than that it's really it's really quick awesome oh danny's posting a question um from someone on youtube kathy says i want to make an oreo bag for my niece who is five uh, feet four inches tall. Should I make her a small, a uh, small or a large? So I'm it's five. Small or small. Sarah. Yeah, I, I would go with small. No, I'm five two. So I, I, I'll hold the two bags, the two sizes up, just so you can see. I made a small for my daughter, and she's five four, and it's perfect on her. I, made a I was small. gonna say small. Did you say large, Sarah? So here's I'm five two. Well, I, I know you can't see too well, but here's the small, and here's the large. So here's some of the much stuff you want to carry, right? Yeah, I guess it depends on how much you're putting in there. All right. So I'm the um, crazy person who bases my bag size that I carry off of. Uh, does my Kindle fit? So <laughs> my Kindle doesn't fit in the small; it fits in the large. Oh. You know, I just, it's so funny, a few years ago, I tried reading one book on a Kindle, and I was like, oh, this is not for me, and then I got one, a new Kindle, a couple weeks ago, and, like, I cannot get enough of reading the Kindle, like, in the I evening, love my paper light. any time of That's day, I'm like, paper yeah, I, I just want to go and read all the time now, so it's crazy. <laughs> I've got one of the cases that makes it stand up, and I read at lunch every day. Oh. Nice. Hey, Sarah, that reminds me, um, one of the books that you recommended a while back, um, it's about a, a family who goes to, who moved to Alaska. Oh, The Great Alone. 
Yes, I'm addicted to audiobooks. I'm always while well, I'm crocheting or whatever. I, I fly a lot, so I've always got my earbuds stuck in my ears. I listened to that book. It was phenomenal. I loved it. It was great. And the narration was perfect. So thanks for the recommendation. It was good. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I've read a few of our, her other books in the past. Um, uh, the names are not coming to me right now, but I enjoy her writing. Um, who else is really good? I don't know if I'm pronouncing her last name right, but Jody Pico. Uh, yeah, she's good too, yeah. Yeah, she's a good writer too. I think we should do like a world tour, like stop in different cities and say hi to everyone, do like a meet and greet. Okay, next time you go to Disney, Disney, I can meet you up there. Oh, we will definitely meet you in Disney next time we go. I'm hoping it'll be November because uh, <laughs> I super love going to Disney, but. It's the first time hearing about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured I would. It would be better just to spring it on you, and then there you'll be so shocked you'll just be like, uh, "I'll laugh and say yeah," and I'll just go ahead and book the tickets. So cool. that was my plan. <laughs> I, I like the way you think, Sarah. <laughs> I, I did that for Labor Day weekend. I booked our food and wine festival trip and just told Brian, "Hey, by the way, we're going Labor Day weekend." Yep. And don't forget about your trip to Ottawa too, right? Yes. I'd love to check it out. <laughs> yeah, Maine. Maine would be fun. Uh, and we Maine. Start in Maine. It's the furthest to the east. Got to go from east to the west. <laughs> Michelle, how hard is it to get senators' tickets? Hard because I can't stand them. Oh, <laughs> I, I, meant, I meant overall. Like if we were going to take a road trip to Ottawa to go see the Panthers play. Oh God, not not really hard. Like if you're going like us, we're Toronto fans. It's usually sold out. Um, although it is their second arena. But it's not hard. Just let me know when you want to, and I, I can check it all out for you. Awesome. Yeah, that'll be fun. If those games don't fall on Saturdays next season. We were looking for a Saturday away hockey game. I have a yeah. feeling it's going to end up being Nashville. Kind of fits the bill for this season. But we're, we're trying to do one away game every season. Funny story for you. So Michaela likes the Panthers because it's kitties. And Ethan used to call Nashville the Nashville Creditors. <laughs> <laughs> so those are little stories we're going to be telling at their weddings. But anytime, like, so when Trevor's father plays Proline, he'll ask the kids what they want him to bet on. And Michaela will be like, oh, any of the kitty teams. And she's always picking the Panthers whenever they're playing. And luckily, I don't know, I think the kids got a horseshoe up her rear end. They always win whenever she says to pick them. <laughs> So, how many if, if you, do you have, pardon? How many children do you have? Two and uh, one adult son that will never leave home, I, aka husband. <laughs> I ask because I have an Ethan and Michaela as well, and I have oh. a, a Drake and a Caitlin or Katie, so that's why I ask. How do you, how do you spell your Michaela's name? M I K A Y L A. Oh, we spell ours M A K A. Yeah, that's probably from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> a Drake. Gotta and have a the extra A. That's why. How do you spell your Michaela's name? M I K A Y L A. Oh, we spell ours M A K A. Ben. <laughs> hey, Robin. Hello. Hello. I'm just trying to draw. That's why. Well, how do you spell your Michaela's name? Robin is got feedback. Oh, we spell ours M A K. I had to mute her. I always would get a loop of sound. Her, your, uh, whatever you're listening through, it's loud enough where your mic's picking up. And How do you spell your Michaela's name? Robin is got feedback. Oh, we spell ours M A K. I had to mute her. I always would get a loop of sound. I have to show you my color palette for my quilt. And Danny, do you recognize the fabric? Yeah, Tommy, Mommy, top? Doctor Who. Uh, we have the same fabric. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that my dad started me on Doctor Who when I was like five, but with PBS when I was a little kid. So I, I'm thinking I watched that the whole series one through seven on BBC. That's another reason I stayed up so late the, most of the summer. <laughs> Robin, I'm going to unmute you. See if it's fixed. <laughs> Danny and Sarah, are you going to Lollapalooza this weekend? I've never been there. Sarah's gone once before. I No, I've... Twice? At least I know of, I'm saying. 
I can't remember if I've gone once or twice. It was like at the beginning, you know, years back already. Um, no, we are not going to Lollapalooza this weekend. Uh, but we the are. People downtown are unreal. <laughs> We are going downtown tomorrow, though, because my friend Natalie, I don't know if anyone follows uh, So Hungry Hippie on social media, but she's visiting, she's visiting us from Wisconsin, and we're going to go tomorrow downtown Chicago to the Shedd Aquarium and um, the architectural <laughs> boat tour. So we're going on a boat tour, um, and they my explain friend, the, the architecture of all the buildings downtown and um, social media. Right, so. a good meal at Navy Pier or something like that. Cool. Have fun with that. Thank you. Um, but good luck getting across town. Yeah. Ooh, we're, we're, I think we're taking the train, right, Danny? <laughs> so is everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so we should drive then, right? Do, do you think we should drive instead, Sarah? Um, down to the shed. I don't know if you're going to be able to get down Lakeshore Drive. You should be able to. Um, I don't think that's close, but, you know, I would avoid, like, Grant Park, but I don't, that one, um, demonstration had Lakeshore Drive closed off. Yeah. Maybe we should change plans with her. I don't you know. Tickets ready to what else? Run. No, I didn't buy tickets, but what else would we do? I didn't have Something another backup plan, you know? <laughs> Something entertaining. No, you, you know what? Just, um, go with, like, are you going in the morning? Yeah, I think we were going to leave here about 9 o'clock in the morning. You should be okay. 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 But you'll have fun. The shed is great. Yeah, we haven't been there in, what, two or three years, Danny? Two years, huh? Yeah. But Danny and I both worked at pet stores, and so we like seeing the fish, especially because a lot of the fish are fish we're familiar with. So uh, we like going They there. have uh, um, penguins you can dress. Are the kids going, too? They are, yep. I think they can dress up as penguins. Oh, really? Yeah, I was looking. I was gonna um, take my one great nephew, and I was looking, and I think that they've got a thing now where you can um, the kids can dress up as penguins, and they've got like a um, large scale penguin house for them to crawl through with their. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty cute. <laughs> I don't know if William would do that though, Danny. Do you think William would do that? Uh, unlikely. <laughs> The girls would probably do that, though. I could see the girls wanting to dress up. That would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun. Thank you. I saw Lauren just jumped on. Hi, Lauren. The girls would probably do that, though. I could see the girls wanting to dress up. That would be fun. Robin's got a lot of feedback there. Have fun. I think my mic was I causing some Lauren feedback, so I Hi, turned Lauren. it off. It still has the feedback. Hello. Sorry, Hi, I'm trying to I'm probably trying. do that. So I could see the girls wanting to dress up. That would be fun. Oh, baby. Oh, so Hi everybody. Oh. Hello. Oh, look, look how baby. cute. Oh. So cute. I'm I'm supposed to be sewing, but I this one's kinda keeping me Hello. How old is she now? She's six weeks. Time sure wow, flies. Wow, time flies. Everyone's like, when's uh, Lauren having her baby? And it was like a weekly update, I think, on her show. Is Lauren yeah. having her baby yet? <laughs> yeah, right? I know. It, it felt like it took forever to get her here, and then, you know, all of a sudden she's here, and she's growing up way too fast. <laughs> How is she sleeping? Is she doing okay with the sleeping? Um, She's sleeping a lot more during the day. Um, She's starting to get better at night. Oh, you're okay. She's my chunkiest baby yet, so she's she's got her little rolls. I can't remember where is she. Aww. Yeah. Those are the kind of cheeks you just want to give a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> right. She really is adorable. Um. Yeah. I'm. I actually. I'm. I'm doing a farmer's market tomorrow, and I should be sewing. This is my super messy sewing room, but there's oh, my. Industrial oh wow! Room. I see your juki back there. Yeah, awesome. super industrial, and I've got all my threads and everything. I'm like, oh yeah, right back. Oh cool, super cool. <laughs> I'm like, there's there's so let's see, there's more right there too. Wow. So, but yeah, um, she she's just 
an attention hog. She wants to be held all the time. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of Violet. <laughs> Hi, honey, girl. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to jump on and say hi real quick, because, like awesome I said, I can't keep going up. right. <laughs> There's no <laughs> hands to sew. <laughs> oh, I see Danny's putting a comment from Judy up on the screen. Uh, Judy says, Sarah, you mentioned a different needle plate for your Juki the other night. I ordered my Juki today. What was the name of the needle plate? So it was a needle plate for thick fabric. So. Um, because the Juki is a straight stitch only, the needle doesn't move uh, like from left to right, so there's only one single needle hole for the uh, uh, needle in the original plate that comes with the machine. So the thick fabric plate is just, um, so the regular plate has a small hole. The thick fabric plate has just a, tol a hole that's a little bit bigger. I don't know the, the size of the hole. It might have been two millimeters or three millimeters. I'm, I'm just guessing off the top of my head. But basically the bigger needle hole helps when you're sewing with thicker fabric because uh, thicker fabric is, you know, thicker layers. And sometimes when the needle comes down through the thick layers, it kind of veers to the side a little bit and having that slightly bigger hole helps because then it, the needle doesn't hit the plate. It, you know, even if the needle kind of tilts a little bit and the hole is bigger, it still goes through the hole so it doesn't break your needle. And um, I think my plate for the Juki for the thicker fabrics was around $100. So I did purchase that a few years ago. I don't have a, a link because I don't recall exactly where I purchased it, but I believe it was Sovac Direct. Um, but I have never changed it back to the original plate since I bought the, the um, plate for thick fabrics. So even when I piece quilt blocks and stuff, even though those are thinner fabrics, the plate still works fine and it doesn't like suck my fabric through the hole. So um, that's what I got for my Juki. Thank you, Danny, for putting that up there. So, I'm useful once every day or two. So I was wondering if anyone else feels the same way, but um, I have the same feeling when I go to Target. I don't know if you have a Target near you, but when I go to the quilt shop, if you go in there for one thing and you walk out with maybe 10 things, uh, I feel kind of embarrassed and like I kind of shouldn't have done that. And I don't know if anyone feels the same way, but I feel it's the same thing with quilt shops or Target. Like you go in there for the one thing, and you come, like you go in there for socks and you come out with a purse and uh, stationery or like going into the quilt shop, you go in there for the one yard and you come out with, uh, I don't know, a new ruler, some uh, fat quarters and all this stuff. So I don't know if that happens to anybody else, but um, it's starting to be a problem for sure. <laughs> so I have a whole shelf behind me over there full of fabric. I have a walk-in closet full of fabric. Oh, wow. I mean, all the way. So, my I, some of it's my mother's stuff. My mother passed her fabric as well. But I, we, we have this store called Martin's. It's a, it's a salvage place, but they also, they sell, um, they get like um, cheaper bolts of fat. That's not cheap fabric. Like, I am... Like they buy it on clearance and they're kind of like a liquid yeah, but it's still good stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, but they do have like um, new stuff too. So okay. they, we have them all around there. There's like one within, that's why you should come to Maine. There's a Martins like in every, I don't know, every 50 miles is a Martins. Okay. And there's where I'm central, where I'm located, there's one north, there's one south, there's one west and east all within equal distance from me. So we go to that store and my husband, he's an enabler. And I say, okay, we're not coming here to buy fabric, but I always have to go look. And he'll always say, well, why don't you get that? Why don't you get that? Why don't you get this? And then the girls at the store are enablers. I can't help myself. And this is that. This I'll be going to Maine soon. I have a client that's in Maine. I'm not sure when. I'll be in Buffalo in a couple of weeks. But um, we're in Maine. I was Maine just Maine at the name of the glad I didn't know about it. <laughs> It was bad enough stopping at the regular quilt stores. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's, 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 they're all over the place in Maine. I'm annoyed because I didn't realize I literally was within a couple miles of the Alewives fabrics. And I oh, didn't yeah. think about it. We went to the Pemaquid Lighthouse and I was like, oh my gosh, if we'd have just gone up, continued on Route 1, there was Alewives. <laughs> yep. I was like, yeah, I finally got to see all the New England states in the last week. So, yeah, although I live for you to come to Maine, Sarah and Danny. 
Hopefully Lighthouses and Barden. The ocean. Um, oh, it was gorgeous. Pemiquit is a beautiful place to go. Yeah. What's yeah. the best season to come there? Mm -hmm. uh, it was when we were there last week. Well, let me tell you what the temperature is right now. Um, I've had my air conditioner running 24-7 for the last four days. It's been in the 90s and humid as heck. That sounds too yep. hot. Yeah. They would say it's humid up there, and we're like, we're from North Carolina. This isn't humid. Oh, yeah. They're North like, Carolina's humid. So, so I was going to say, that I would go up there in the summer, and my family would be like, it's so humid. I'm like, oh, my God, my hair is beautiful. This is fantastic. What are you talking about? <laughs> there was people who said, oh, my God, it's so hot. I can't even take my dog out. And I looked at him, and I'm thinking, this is delightful. <laughs> <laughs> It's I personally like it. Um, like in in September, you can get some pretty hot days, but at least at night you can like open the windows and it could you could cool it off. But um, sometimes in the summer it's hot, so that we I won't even like the if I had been on vacation the last two weeks, I wouldn't even go into the ocean because you can't breathe because it's just so stuffy. But I personally, my favorite time is fall. But if you're coming to see the ocean. And it's going to be a little cold because it's cold even in July. What's the water but temperature Martin, in the ocean? But Martin is open seven days a week. And sometimes even when there's a snowstorm. So. <laughs> Bring in is snow. I don't, ahead, think she I don't think she heard your question. Uh, it's someone else trying to talk Oh, okay. Oh, Danny was asking if you get a lot of snow in Maine. Um, let me see. This year, Bill, how much snow do we get this year? How much snow do we get this year? It seemed like we were snow blowing every other day. How much snow oh did we gosh. get? Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah. Uh, almost 100 inches. <gasps> oh no. Wow. That's a lot of snow. You get, yeah, yeah no, I live in the beach. No snow for me. What'd you say? You got the trifecta. You get high heat, high humidity, and snow. Well, not in July, but. Well, yeah, I mean, year round. <laughs> <laughs> you got a tough life over there. Yeah, you know, and, and sometimes we, we skip over um, spring. We go right from winter and go into summer. Chicago's like that too. Yeah, that happens to us sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. So when I was, like, when I was a kid in Massachusetts, we had some years that I swear that we just skipped over summer and went right to fall. Oh. Yeah. The weather has been weird in, fall in North Carolina. Carolina. Five, five, four or five years. But then again, I live in Florida. We have two seasons, summer and really, really summer. I see, yeah. I see Fabric Bender says, come to Texas. We have had 31 days this summer with temperatures in the hundreds. Oh, my gosh. Who well, it's not over yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably it's been 31 days of summer so far. Whew. Yeah, here, here in uh, St. George, Utah, it's it's been like 107 for the last week, 107, 109. Oh, my, oh my gosh. Yeah, and it's it's dry, too. It's not humid at all. I know people say it's dry, so it doesn't feel so bad. But you know what? 107 is 107. I'm going to melt no. go outside. It, Danny, it all depends on what you're used to. Because I went to Northern California. Where did we go? San Jose, Sacramento, wherever the heck it was. I got out of the car. The thing said it was 114. I walked out and went, there's no way on God's green earth this is 114 degrees. Because it felt cooler than R85. Because of the humidity <laughs> that we have in South Florida. Wow. Yeah. I travel I to the Middle East place. for work as well, and it's the humidity, like, and it is, it's always in the three digits. It's extremely warm. Like, you can look out the window and sweat will start pouring off of you. <laughs> oh, God. Amy, what did you were coming to Maine for? <laughs> um, so, I travel for work. I work, I'm a nurse. I work for an electronic medical record company out of Kansas City. Um, so I'll be in Buffalo in a couple of weeks, but I'm supposed to be going to Eastern Maine next month. Eastern Maine is Bangor. Bangor? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You live near there? Um, Bangor is probably an hour. See, in Maine, we measure distance by hours, not by miles. Sure. Yeah. Uh, 
Bangor is probably an hour and 15, 20 minutes from that, from me. It's north, it's north of where I live. Might shoot you a message. We'll have a cup of tea. Yeah, I'll do. Ohio, too. I don't know if anyone's in Ohio. And there's a Martins near um, Bangor. It's in Brewer, which is just across the river. Well, before the wheels hit the ground when I'm flying, as soon as I get signal, I'm going on my maps nearest quilt shop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have to travel with two bags because I. Yep. Bring well, them. if you look up quilt shop, you're not probably not going to find Martin. So I look for fabric. Fabric, you know. Yep. Well, you do it. Sometime I'll go to, I'm going to go to Martin's and I'm going to take pictures of it and then I'll post them so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I mean, oh, the, yeah. the like one is in Southern Maine, which is in Portland and they have, it's, that one's even bigger than most of our quilt shops here in Maine. Sarah, weren't you working on something today besides writing funny notes? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I said I was going to cut out the fabric for the Lillian laptop bag. I didn't see you doing that yet. Well, it, I, I feel <laughs> very engaged in the conversation. Yeah, people said, so. like, it's been more of a social long than a sew along. Oh, really? I... <laughs> hey, I've got three full motos cut out and almost the full exterior of another one. And the Red Sox just beat the Yankees, so it's a good night. Yay! Yay, yeah, yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the lady last night. She'd be upset if she, she was here today. <laughs> oh, they do. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, from last night? Yeah. She's a Yankee yeah, fan. yeah. Well, so last night the Sox went down. The Yankees went up 4 nothing after an inning and a half. And then Steve Pierce happened with his three home runs, and they just blew up offensively. And then his first at bat tonight, he had another home run. So in the past 18 innings against the Yankees, Steve Pierce has four home runs. That must have been an early game if it's over already. Uh, seven o'clock start, four one final. Wow, that was the fast game then. For Red Sox Yankees, that's probably yeah. the fastest game ever. Well, we were out for supper tonight, and they were showing videos of the Yankees uh, on TV of the TV screens where we were eating of all the fights that the Yankees and the Red Sox have been in. So it was kind of like, oh, okay. Jason Veritek. Jason Veritek. Yeah. He was my favorite because I was a catcher in high school, so he was always my favorite. I miss him. I think the most famous fight I remember from the Red Sox is Pedro, Mar Pedro Martinez. Same Martinez. fight. Yeah, same fight. Same fight. Yeah. It was the same, when he threw yeah, he uh, Zimmerman down. down. Yeah. Yeah, so – Oh, oh yeah. At the same time when when Jason Veritek uh glove in the face of Alex Rodriguez. So the fact that it was in A Rod's face just made it all the better. <laughs> <laughs> so I, was like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. No, I don't. <laughs> Don Zimmer was a former Chicago Cubs uh manager. Oh. Yeah, so this and is so raw. And there was a brawl, and he came out on the field. And if I remember right, was he was he was he was Pedro just standing there? And I don't can't remember what yeah. happened. And I came Pedro out. like yeah. Yeah, pushed him, not pushed him out of the way, but like no, had Zimmer it, shoved up. Pedro first. Yeah, and, yeah. Then Pedro and but his neck and then, down. <laughs> yeah, but he was older. I mean, he was yeah, like I, I think sure. he was like way over retirement age, and so and he was an older guy. And so it was a big thing, you know, because he was older and Pedro touched him. And I think he barely even touched him. I think he was like, he had the, like the top of his head, like being a ballerina and, pushed, you know, <laughs> down he went. But that picture of Veritek shoving his glove in A-Rod's face, that's a thing of beauty. <laughs> hey, Sarah, I wanted to share with you, don't get jealous. Um, one of our local quilt stores does a yard sale. You take in fabric, they price it, and then you get credit to the store. So I got a fat quarter bundle. Of, uh, and then I got yardage <laughs> of, um, well, except this is the frogs from the All Stars. But oh, yeah, yeah. Yardage of, um, what am I, De La Luna? De La Luna, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So oh, I'm thinking of this for. Either the I think I'm gonna make the the what's the 
I was asked about the Oreo bag the other night, and what's the pea bag? Dang it. What's this, the free pattern that's the square bag, rectangular bag? You Baker Street. I said P, B. So Baker I Street. That one first. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Well, no, yeah. I was thinking of the pea patterns, and I was like, bag? <laughs> no, that's not a square. <laughs> it's a little late. <laughs> I've been running around today. So I think something of this is going to be in Baker Street bag for start back to school. I'm not talking about back to school, but it's coming up very quickly. <laughs> it is coming so. up quickly. Oh, that's going to look awesome. Yeah. So anyway, yay. Yeah, or we need the four pack bundle with oh. the couple and backpack. I wanted to make it before school, but now it's too late. I already hey, started when it came in of the faces because I was worried they would get and what's really cool about the fat quarter pack is she cut the faces bigger. So okay. it wouldn't, you got three full faces. So the, all the faces in the fat quarter pack were, That's were, uh, were 24 by one. She asked us before she cut them and we said, yes, we want to be able to have maximum faces. Yeah. No, no. Half. <laughs> but anyway, I had to show you that. Yeah, not the Edelweiss though. I don't know. Oh, Edelweiss, okay. I don't know if that was Christina. Were, did you have a yeah. question about something or? No, I just had a thought, and then I remember that my thought is wrong, so ignore me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw Danielle jumped on. Hi, Danielle. I think she's muted. Oh, so. hey, Sarah. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> I'm well. I totally. I was waiting at seven o'clock. Well, my seven o'clock would be y'all six o'clock for it. And then I just looked up and said, dang, this hour is taking so long to go through. Oh. And I looked up and it was like 9.03. And I said, oh, bye, mama. I got to go. I got to go to the store. <laughs> so I missed what everybody's making. But I'm making my daughter um, the train case, the clover. Okay. The train yeah, case. Yeah. The large one, like the one that's behind you. Yeah. Um, I do have one question. Sure. Because I was watching the Gilmore Girls, note to, note to everyone, don't watch TV while you're cutting the fabric. Not a good idea. Oh. <laughs> so I cut my fabric a quarter of an inch shorter. Is that going to be a problem? Just the, um, what is it? The, I guess it's the front and the, 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 the lid part. Okay. Did you cut the interfacing too shorter or just the fabric? Every, yep. Uh, um, so it's only 36, it's supposed to be 36 and a half, it's 36 and a quarter. How about when you sew, when you sew the two side panels together, instead of the half inch seam allowance, just do the quarter of an inch? And I think that should cover you for the length. Jesus. You know? Okay, because I was sitting okay? here for two, since yesterday trying to figure out how I was going to do it. And I was like, I'll just ask her when we go to the sewing. <laughs> yeah, I think it should, I think you'll be perfectly fine. Okay, goody, goody, goody. I'm a happy keeper. <laughs> Oh yeah, I love the Gilmore Girls. Yes, I'm on a, I'm on a part where Rory did a bad thing with the married man. Oh yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I have a meme that is saved in one of my work folders that is my constant Monday. It's Lorelai saying, "I need a coffee IV." <laughs> oh, she did say that. That's funny. <laughs> oh yes, yes. It is the best meme for pretty much any point in time when you're tired at work and you need to express that. <laughs> Danny and I actually don't drink coffee. That's just weird and I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even have a coffee maker in the house. <laughs> I, I hate coffee. <laughs> I, I can't comprehend that. That's just... I seriously think you guys have some weird superpowers because I don't know how you do it at all. And you don't sleep much, Danny, so how? I know he gets like four hours of sleep a day. I don't, I don't, I don't get that. Hey, we're not I don't know. I'm not. Right here. Hug, all right? We don't want to make this a problem with Sarah. I'm not. I'm not a functioning human being or anything without a coffee. I, I can't. Like, just, I can't even understand it. <laughs> and Sarah, I, ask Michelle what I ask. Have her sending me in exchange for a ah! thing of fabric. <laughs> Is it coffee? <laughs> 
Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have Tim Horton's coffee on the way to me. And you know what's funny is when I bought that coffee, my husband's like, I can't even believe I'm buying this. This coffee's so gross. Tell her to try McDonald's. Honestly, we're Canadians and we hate Tim Horton's. Like, it's gross. So yeah, I really like you, Christina, because he was good with me buying it for you. So that's a shocker. Your McDonald's must have better coffee than ours because ours is horrible. That's oh my God, it's amazing. Ice coffee is good. The regular coffee is gross. The iced coffee is delicious. I don't know. I guess here in Canada, it's different. But in Canada, the McDonald's coffee is what Tim Hortons actually used to be. Hmm. So this is required Diet Coke. I'm not a Starbucks person. It tastes like tree bark to me. I oh, love no, it. I totally do Starbucks, too, and I do Dunkin' Donuts, and Dunkin Donuts I, if delicious. it's coffee, I will probably drink it. I love Donald's. It's my favorite. Bojangles is good, too. Well, I think it's an East Coast deal, Bojangles, because my buddy from Virginia, they talk about it, but we've never been to one. Oh, I've never been to a Bojangles to get... Oh, you're missing out. Bojangles. Oh, we just had Wawa open across the street. They have good coffee, too. Oh, Wawa has the best. I coffee. love Wawa. They have and you know what the best part is? Because they just opened, I get free coffee for the next ten days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I need some advice. I'm doing these moto pouches, so I have this this sketchy fabric. It's like sketch Disney characters. What? I don't know what to do for a lining. Let's see it again. Here, let's see. There we go. Mm -hmm. So it's you do you have any polka colors? dots? Show us your outfits. I got all yeah, kinds polka, of polka dots. Yeah, polka dots, yeah. I really like polka dots. Polka dots I'm, goes yeah, everything. Yeah, it does. Polka Christina, dots. that yes. polka dot fabric you showed me the other day when you sent me a message, I think it was black with polka dots. I just ran out of black and white polka dots. Um, no, I have red and white polka color. Dots. There was one with colors. Maybe it was white, the background? Oh, the one that I bought at Joanne's. Yeah. Good call, Michelle. Sometimes I have some smart ideas. Once in a while. That's <laughs> called a coffee idea. About. Oh, that's <laughs> the one that she's yeah. talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is... It's like yes. pastelli dots. Part winner, winner, chicken dinner. Ha! Because, you know, I'm in Joanne's, and I'm sending pictures to Michelle of what is in my cart. <laughs> because that's exactly what I need is He's more, more fast. fabric. Show us the dots again. You flashed it too fast. Oh, it's because uh, I wasn't, if I'm not talking, it doesn't show. So my light is not great, but it's like it's very pastel lovely. on black. Perfect. It's beautiful. Hey, Danielle, where are you from? I didn't catch where you're from. This is Tammy. Hi, Tammy. I'm in um, Atlanta, Georgia, Marietta, Georgia. Hey. Okay. So when, when Sarah and Danny decide to move, I will be a hot tip and a jump away. So... When I get the job with them and they pay me in fabric, I won't have to wear the part. <laughs> <laughs> so, Danielle, you're in Georgia. Have your kids gone back to school? Do you have kids? I don't have kids, but my girlfriend's kids down the streets, which are my kids. They, matter of fact, they just got um, They went back to school yesterday. Some of our counties went back to school today. I don't understand why. I've got a friend who lives outside of Georgia. I can't remember the city that she's in. Her kids went back on Tuesday. She was posting on Facebook. Like yes. first day of school. It's yes. like it's July. <laughs> they they literally had six weeks off from school. Wow. Last year, it was seven. seven. They must be a year round school because that sounds like the schedule I was on when I was year round. We have no. a in North Carolina, you can't go back till the twenty fifth. So no. teachers go back the fifteenth. <laughs> what I think they're trying to do is keep us from having to experience no Mageddon. So when we had when we had Snowmageddon in 2014, I don't know if you got if anybody heard of this. We yes. had two inches of snow, right? Yeah, it was no, oh, it wasn't but even it was two ice. Inches. It was <laughs> like, ice. It was like an inch and a quarter, and it was ice. Yeah, and that's the thing. We get is ice. When we moved to North Carolina, we laughed because the first winter we just had a dusting of snow, and people freaked. And my mom and I were like, "What the crap." Because I was from Pennsylvania. Yes. But, but what it is, it's the ice. That that's the problem. When we get snow, it's gone by noon usually, mm -hmm. and it's usually the ice that's our problem because it mm -hmm. gets slick, and that and they don't have any way to deal with that here because we don't get it enough to get chains and all that mess. 
Where did you say you live, Colleen? Louisville, North Carolina, near Winston-Salem. Oh, okay. Yep, so that's like seven hours from me. <laughs> I'm closer to you, Danielle. I live near Myrtle Beach. I'm pretty sure my entire universe would shut down if anybody even thought about getting snow here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how they do it, but the Florida Panthers, for the past two years, on Fort Lauderdale Beach have set up an ice rink. So there's outdoor ice skating in December from, like, mid-December through New Year's outside in Fort Lauderdale, and I don't know how they manage to maintain ice. Can I ask you oh, a question? Do. do you guys have any, like, natural disasters, like floods, earthquakes, tornadoes? Hurricanes. Hurricanes, Daniel. Hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you have, Louisa, in Brazil? Any natural disasters? No. Nothing? Hmm. All right, Sarah, we're moving to Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we just had a tornado warning yesterday. I think it dropped in, like, um, Walton County in Georgia. The buttload of rain in my house. I know yeah. Oh, oh yeah. we've been since, like, Sunday. No nonstop rain. Uh, yeah, we, we've had... Like, it's like, um, like if you put water in a Ziploc bag and then turn it over and open it up, like, that's what's been happening every night for, like, 45 minutes. Yeah, see my water boots? We've been having nonstop rain here in, in uh, North Carolina. It's just been coming, and winds and come through, knock the trees down, so we've had trees down everywhere. Um, my plants look good when I got back, though. <laughs> then my, my guard was flooded, but my plants are good. And my fish pond, thank goodness I got lettuce plants and whatever covering the top because my pond was completely overflowing and the fish would have flowed out. <laughs> when we have like floods, it's just because of trash. So not natural. <laughs> not natural. <laughs> You wouldn't believe Not it, feel. but in our private group, we actually have a really big following of people from Brazil. Because I look at like the insights, and that's one of our bigger areas outside the United States. Cool. Yeah, we have a lot of people sewing here. Where's Bronwyn? one? Why isn't she on? She, she went to uh, lunch with her family. I think. Said, no, that was last. Yeah, she's. No, today she said. She oh, it was today. Oh, she said she was. Yeah, going she's to out for lunch. She's out for lunch with her family. With the, the, the private groups and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I instant messaged her. I haven't been on Facebook much today, but I instant messaged her and forgot to message her happy birthday. Oh, God, her birthday was yesterday. I thought, I thought I saw that message yesterday. I saw that message today. Her birthday is Friday, but it's now Saturday in Australia. There's 16 hours she ahead of us. <laughs> okay, so New Zealand. Oh, so I'm just kidding. It's the same thing. <laughs> well, no, they're not, but I don't know what New Zealand time zone is. I can tell you that Sydney, Australia is 16 hours ahead of us. She told us the flight. Danny, it, trickster. It's about three I'm hours sorry, my away. husband is yelling at me from the other side of the house and correcting me. It's 14 hours. So it'd be 15 ahead of you, Sarah. <laughs> He's yelling at me from the other side of the house, which is hilarious. <laughs> Danny, my... I'm telling you, you and my husband are like twins that were separated at birth. <laughs> I, I, I love a good yell across the house. That's my kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, I know something I wanted to say earlier when I couldn't get connected. Danny, you made a you made a comment to Sarah that she, uh, or that you you don't like you always like can't keep a secret or what was it that you always oh, yeah, tell? Presents? Yeah. And then I was thinking, well, wait a minute. Why does he always not let her tell us what the fourth pattern is or something? He's like, nope, you can't tell him. Then when Sarah says, Danny, should I tell him? That's like her coach saying, hey, I shouldn't say, but I want you to take the blame for everyone. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to tell all you guys. I'd like to show you guys the next set of minikins. But, you know, Sarah would probably like, no, nope, can't do it. Don't do it. Uh oh, <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it because that's always your no, Mom's you the word. Sarah. I mean, I would show you guys <laughs> everything. Take camera and walk around. Okay. I'm excited about stuff. When I'm excited, I like to share. Hi, Diane. Yeah. Is it true? Is it true, sir? 
I just worry. I, I would show all that stuff, but I just worry if it's like months in advance. If I show it now and then it doesn't come out till October, I just worry like people won't care by October. Like it'll people will be over it. So that's my only. That's my worry. But you know, the Minikins aren't even done anyways. There's only a few yeah, they're not all done. So far. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was just one example. There's yeah. times when you're gonna tell us something, and Danny's like, "No, don't tell him." Sir, you said too much. That's what I was gonna say. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime Sarah cues, "Hey, Danny, uh, should I tell him?" I'm like, "Nope." No, I I say that to try to include you in the conversation a little more. It, not because we're trying to keep secrets. I don't think anything. I don't think anything besides the Minikins really has to be a secret. So the next set is going to be called Minikins. I thought they were going. With, I thought we were going with Baker's Dozen. Uh, well, at first we were calling it that because we weren't sure if we should say that's another set of Minikins. But yeah, it's another set of Minikins. Okay. Well, the secret's out again. But it's an extra. So instead of twelve, there's thirteen because we decided, or Danny decided to do a bonus pattern. So. Because it's, e <laughs> it's easy for him to suggest a bonus <laughs> pattern because he doesn't have to, to write a bonus pattern. So he was just like, yeah, a bonus pattern. Let's do it. Come on. <laughs> well, it really was hard to pick when we did the um, when we did the vote because they were all great ideas. Yeah, the was vote was super close. And I still have been getting emails asking for – actually, yesterday I got an email asking for the uh, backseat car organizer. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, well, yeah, the cooler – or no. Yeah, the cooler one. Gotcha. The vote, yeah, but it was really close. What was the third one? Uh, the the, fan, the fanny pack, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. like the waist bag. Yep, yep. Maybe you'll have to do another if we get so many shares and likes or something. Oh yeah, we could do that. <laughs> we could do that. We still have to do the Kennedy bag. We still have to do the Kennedy bag video, yes. Yeah, I'm definitely waiting for that. I want to make one for work. Oh yeah, yeah. the Kennedy bag is awesome. I'm about to make another one. Uh, yeah, I want to make one. I've already got my fabric and um, faux leather ready to go, waiting for the Kennedy bag. When I make when I make the second one, I think I'm gonna add Peltex to it. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. On the bottom. Um, on the bottom and on the sides. Yeah, that's a good idea. No, on the, matter of fact, on the bottom. No, I'm going to go and get some um, acrylic from Home Depot and oh, put it yeah. in and that's put it in idea. like that. And then I'm using the Peltex. Come on. Using the Peltex to um for the size to give it a little bit more mm -hmm. stiffness. Yeah. But a click the you. bottom? Huh? What did he ask? You um, said um Daniel I'm sorry, I don't know if it's me or Danny. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Danny. No, I think we had the same question about the acrylic on the bottom, right? Is that what you're, I was asking yeah. the thickness. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Um, you can go to Home Depot and um they have like the the over there, I can't remember where in Home Depot it is. Matter of fact, it might even be Lowe's. So I think I started going to Lowe's. Um, they have acrylic with acrylic plates that you can buy, and then they will cut it to the size that you need for it to be. So they got. So why do you choose? Why do you choose that over, say, the the craft? Um, you know, the plastic stuff, or why do you choose that? What's what do you like about it? I carry way too much stuff in my bags. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I carry far too many things in my bag, so um, I know that craft foam wouldn't wouldn't last past the first time I put it in there. Have you ever tried going to the dollar store? Some people mentioned like getting um, placemat, plastic placemats, or other stuff. Those are the placemats are thin though. Are they thin? Yeah, too? I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, the placemats are good for making templates. Yeah, I'll yeah. show you. Oh, okay. A bunch of it. Give me making templates. Like the acrylic uh, minikin templates we have? They're a lot thinner. They're a little more, f they're flexible. So it's always over there where the kitchenware is at? Because it's it's not placemats, it's cutting mats. Cutting mats, yeah. Oh, cutting yeah, mats. yeah. So right here. You see? Yeah, yeah. Oh! Oh my can... gosh, do you use those? Yeah, so you just like if I had my pattern, I would lay it on top because you can see, and then just use my sharpie to trace out the pattern, and then cut it out, and then of course your pattern template yeah. pieces will last longer. I wonder if I could put that in my Cricut. Is it thin enough? For um, my Cricut? I don't think it's uh, that much. You know, well, which Cricut do you have? Yeah, I Cricut? got. Um, I have. I have the Explorer too. It might. It might do fine. Uh, 
Maybe. I or think the, make, the maker could definitely do it because the maker can do that thin wood. Um, oh, I don't well, know. that's fine. I have a girlfriend who just got the maker, so I have a, now I have a reason to take a project over to her house. There you go. I got a maker on Prime Day. It's still sitting in the box. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> How much was it on Prime Day? Uh, 329 No, it was too much. Your cricket will cut this, Danielle. I haven't even thought about that. Yeah, um, what I do to Sarah Patterns is I save them as a PDF, and then I cut around where her patterns are, and then I pull it into the design space and cut it out on the cricket. Well, and that's what I was thinking about doing because I can, with the maker, it's got the rotary blade. So then you can just cut it. You don't have to interface it. You just throw your fabric on and cut. Hush, yeah. girls. I don't want to buy anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm waiting for it to go back on HSN for the for two seventy. What did my girlfriend just get it for? She got it for two two seventy nine, and she's doing five payments of like I don't know, like sixty or seventy bucks. That's what for I'm. The heir or the maker? The maker. And really? it was a bundle. Yes. Uh, they gone. Bundle. Amara long arm machine. Ah. Yes. So as soon as it goes back on HSN, I'm getting that. That's the next one I'm getting. I should have gotten that one to begin with, but I was just like, hey, I'm just starting off with a cricket. I don't even know if I'm gonna like this thing. Well, hey, if you do t shirt if you do vinyl shirts, keep an eye out because the they just announced three new heat presses. So the first one will be going on clearance all over the place, I'm sure. Oh yeah, I just watched um, Ken's Creations, the uh, with the red ones. Yeah, yeah, I just so watched the original. Will probably start getting uh, clearanced out. It ain't. It's not going nowhere. Well, the red one comes in in the same nine by nine plus the small and the large. So yeah. the green one, people will start clearancing those out as the red one comes in. I don't. So you think that one might go away? Because I'm thinking that one ain't going nowhere. Oh, it'll go away because the red one has the same size. It'll replace it. Hmm. Okay, we'll go with that. That wasn't even my that, that wasn't even my thought process with that. That's that's a good way to think of it. Yeah. If they didn't have a nine by nine in the new set, then I would say no, they'll keep it. But because yeah. there's a nine by nine. Yeah, cricket cricket has way too much of my money right now. Um, <laughs> it's about it's about three hundred dollars on my wall right now. <laughs> yeah, three hundred dollars. How big of an item well, does it cut out? What kind of what? How big of an item does it cut out? 12 by 12 or 12 by 24. 12 by 24 is pretty big. That is. I think the actual cut space is 11 and a half wide. Yes, yeah, like and 11. I, hold on, I'm going to tell you right now. I got one of my mats. It's 11. <laughs> It might be eleven. It might be just a little over eleven and a half. Ooh. Dee Dee says the cricket maker is six, almost seven hundred dollars here in Australia. Heck to the no! <laughs> Holy guacamole, Batman! No, you could buy you could buy three crickets. I mean, three uh, makers for that. Heck to the no! I had to get it for you and ship it. I had the original cricket, the old school. Sure, I... this cricket is two ninety nine and four ninety nine in Canada. You wouldn't believe how much how expensive stuff is to ship. Like if you mailed one of Sarah's books uh, to Europe. It's like a $40 shipping charge. Yikes. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I sold uh, the fabric to somebody for like $24, but she wanted it as something I don't remember now. You know, fabric's good as flat rate envelopes and boxes. Yeah, those I are really it, good. did the envelope, but it was $24.99 flat rate mm -hmm. bubble envelope. Yeah. Was it all overseas? Yep. To Canada from United States. Oh, Canada, yeah. oh, so do you have a PayPal account? Yes. Go yeah, to paypal.com slash ship now. Uh yeah. had a flat rate envelope to Canada should be twenty three fifty. Yeah, it was I my printer wasn't working, so uh, I had to go to the office. Normally I do do that, but I'm, that's I'm, how I said it. Work, I work. <laughs> Normally I print at work because my printer's not working, but yeah, I couldn't do that. I lost one. Oh, there we go. Sir, why don't you cut something out? Um, <laughs> I'm being really productive. I finished three 
star Those blocks out of that. Yeah, everyone's busy Except working. Sarah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> no, I'm the and me. I just got finished eating, so I'm that's trying to finish my. And I'm how going... cute is my parents in the picture? Oh, look at that. That was my aunt's again. wedding. That's awesome. And then this was their wedding picture. They eloped in Pensacola, Florida. Wow, those my are dad. great blocks. Yeah. <laughs> I got and I finished my jet set cinched bag. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Michelle, if you ever say that you're not fast again, I swear to God, girl. Can you see it? It's beautiful. Awesome. Oh, that's that's and I even made sure the fishy is on it and that you can see a fish. Aww. <laughs> How is that for uh, fussy cutting? Those templates are, I won't say the word, but they're kick butt. <laughs> 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 and yet Michelle says that she's not fast, guys. <laughs> but hang on, hang on, wait. I had it all prepped before the show. So I like scarfed down my meal and I came down and I got to cutting and fusing and having it all ready to go. So all I had to do was just sew it together. So blah blah blah. blah. It's still ridiculously <laughs> I'm I'm thinking the same thing. Like, no, Michelle, that's not gonna work. <laughs> I told I'm like, you. How, how long did it take anybody to make a renegade bag? She's like, well, I'm slow. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> I saw that too. I'm used to working under time, like time management. Like it's like usually tight time frames, and I'm usually a big procrastinator. So I got used to working really fast. So I think that kind of helps me a little bit. Sorry. Oh, I think then I think I'm a lost cause. I'm slow. And it's just going to be that way. I cut slow. I sew slow. And the Gilmore girls don't help. <laughs> More coffee. Oh. Diane, That's what I was just going to say, Christina. <laughs> what, Michelle? I said I was just going to say more coffee. That's what does it. The coffee. That's That's yeah. the tip. I'm gonna try it because I like drinking my coffee by itself. Oh, Michelle, what is that behind you? What is that on your window? My head? That's what? my light. That's how bright I am. Oh, you're so awesome. <laughs> I'm a shining star. <laughs> yes, you are. Don't let nobody tell you differently. All right. That um, thing hanging from your window. Yes, what is that? That's the Robert Kaufman uh, Coda Solids. <gasps> Yeah. You bad girl. Where did you get that? Um, Missouri Star Quilt had it on sale um, like a bit ago. It was their daily deal. And I was like, yeah, I'm scooping that up because I need something pretty to look at besides a plain white wall. I feel like I'm in a nut house. So I have that hung up now to look at that instead of these plain white walls. Oh my gosh. I need that. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. It's great because I'll take like my tulip pink fabrics and match it up and see what colors will look best with it. I love it. It's it's I love it, but it's bad for the bank account. Yeah. Yeah. I just um I posted before I was able to get on the live chat. So I when I when I took my stepdaughter yesterday to go get her fabric for the Oh, that's the screamer. When I took my daughter to go get her fabric for the for the train case that I'm making her. I said, okay, I'm going here. I'm only buying her fabric. I still walked out of there with something for me. <laughs> Never fail. I told, her, I told her, don't let me walk out of here with anything. She wasn't anywhere. Else. Oh, I see Tamara's com commenting over on YouTube. My parents have their 62nd anniversary tomorrow. Wow. Congratulations seconds. to them. That is awesome. awesome. That's awesome. Wow. Happy anniversary, Congratulations. parents. I'm How many people are still watching, Danny? Because uh, we have. That means I'm only I'm guessing 200 live. I can't see YouTube. I only see the peak. Wow. Oh yeah, now that means more people came. There for a second, it almost felt like it was just us, though. Like I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I got on, it was 155 people watching. 200. Wow. Hello, everybody else is still watching. Well, I can't see so, the YouTube number, so I I, I know uh, Facebook it's seventy something, but YouTube it it said it peaked at one fifty, so I don't know if it's still there or not. But you know, it's everyone watching. If someone wants to get in and there's already too many, just send a message and I'll drop or whatever. No, I don't want people. Available. Yeah, we have room in the for other people to join, but I, I think some people just want to watch and not. Um, well, I had. 
finding the link. Somebody said search for Meetup because I couldn't remember the app, and I was on my laptop last. I was on the wrong page. My iPad, so I had to search. I mean, I was looking all over the place, and then I finally searched Meet and found it. Um, Google Meet, but um, I want to. Link, it should take you to automatically downloading it. Yeah, but I was on the wrong page. I was yeah. on the wrong Greek page, like an idiot. Yeah, I, I, Dan, once I know she's. I put the messages on YouTube and Facebook, and, and Facebook, I pinned the link, and YouTube, I've been posting links consistently. I couldn't before. find it. I kept looking on your page, and finally, when I searched, I found it, so I'm not sure what happened to it, why I wasn't coming up just on the initial page, but I wanted to show y'all my block, that one of my two blocks I designed for the AccuQuilt block contest. Oh, oh nice. Nice. wow. They oh, all like nice. it. And what's really cool, is it, part of it was inspired by my trip to Maine with the water at the lighthouse. And I, you're talking about buying fabric. I went on fabric.com to find Konas, and I got Capri and Deep Blue and uh, Sea Glass. I love Capri. <laughs> Which was, like, so purple to, perfect to go with the, the water theme of the lighthouse. But anyway, you can vote if you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> put it in put it in the page so we can go or so we know to go to vote for it. Okay, I will I will post it on the page. I will vote for that. I would love to learn how to make a quilt. I'm just so, Oh, Sarah, are you all caught up? You no, I fell that. behind on my summer sampler blocks again. I think I have three I have three to make. Oh yeah. good, then you're right you're right there with me. I got one oh. I need to redo. Oh no, I have two to make. I have one I need to redo and then one I need to do. Uh, it's hard because I'm like, all right, I'm caught up, so I could take it easy a little bit. And then before you know it, I'm three blocks behind again. So Yes. So I just finished this oh, one. Oh, pretty. This is number 11. I like it. Oh, yeah. Good job. I've never made a quilt a day in my life. Neither I'd like to, though. <laughs> Neither have I. Got started in so if you decide to join, you should join this one because it's a quilt one block a week. I know that if I ever if I ever started quilting, it would probably become another addiction. My aunt actually lives about two blocks away from me, and she has a long arm. Wow. I'm sorry. So I'm like, I, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to get started just so that I can use her long arm and be like, okay, teach me everything. Teach me your ways. <laughs> Does she live in Georgia? No, we're actually in southern Utah. Darn. You know, that's how Angela Walters actually learned to quilt was from her father-in-law. And her grandpartner, her grandfather. Grandfather her husband's grandfather. Grandpa. Come on, Danny, get it right. I know. You know I like Angela Walters so much, but I'm not that in detail or, I guess, uh, of her story. Well, Michelle mentioned Melanie Ham earlier, and that Melanie Ham is how I got into sewing because I was looking at her videos for crochet and saw the quilt, and that's all she wrote. I started quilting, and then, of course, I found Sarah. So, but yeah, I love Angela Walters. I've learned a lot from her, and now I have an Amara. Oh, gosh. I actually went to school for. Um, fashion design back in 2002, 2003. Um, oh, no. Hold on, baby. Anyway. Um, Hello. <laughs> sorry, that's my phone uh -oh. Okay. Anyway, I, I realized while I was, I was um, in school that I, I didn't really like sewing clothing. I need you to be quiet, please. Um, and so I stopped sewing for probably... 12 years or so. Um, and then a few years ago, 2015, my friend started making these little pants that were selling like crazy. And I was like, okay, we need money right now, so let me give it a try. Um, and I just, I, I realized I still hate selling clothes. And so I found, I think it was the Ethel, is it Ethel by Spoon? Is it one of our free patterns? No, Evie. Um... Anyway, so I, I tried making my first bag, and I, I sucked at zippers so bad, and so I gave up. And then I just, I found another free pattern, and I tried that one, and I kept going. And, I don't know, three years later, I'm now designing handbags, and <laughs> it's like, oh, it's a huge plunge that, that kind of 
it's a huge hole that I've fallen into. And so I'm scared to start quilting because I know that if I did, it would be one that I just fall into. And, and my husband would be like, okay, you've, you've already got so much work, you know. We don't have to be adding too much. Yeah, yeah but you can too. all the scraps you have from your bags. Mm -hmm. That's true. Here's some quilts I have. And Look how gigantic they look. They're so big. Oh wow! Oh, oh that's awesome. yeah, me too. Show it again. They're 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 gigantic. Oh nice! Oh, that's great. I love that one. But once I get them together, oh, of course. I love make... this. Oh, that is nice. This is the um the floor fabric. I've got some more, but anyways, yeah. How big of a quilt is that gonna make? Gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, Danny. I don't even know. Like, I just started making the blocks. Um, haven't really figured out what I want to do if I'm going to do some cornerstones and just use like four in a quilt and can make two quilts. I haven't decided. Let me see what that fabric. Well, the quilt I made at the beginning of the summer from my first trip. Oh wow! Uh -oh. I took it on my second. Trip. Yeah, I like the guitar block. Oh, that's awesome. I love the guitar in the middle. That's the row by row. You can get row by row patterns free um, from stop stores. You just go online, row by row, experience this book. You can buy the kits or you can use your own fabric. I bought mostly kits and two blocks. But, yeah, uh, that, I'm, that's something else I'm going to need you to put in the, in the, in the, in the, in the row the, by row. <laughs> well, you have to go to the uh, store to get the pattern, right? You can't order. Can you order the pattern um, online? I think there's a certain time I'm, i don't know if it's september 1st or october 1st after that date they can sell they can sell online and sell you can order them but before that you have to go to the store because that's the whole purpose right right people. i get it oh i see oh, queen okay. of creative was commenting um how to get unmuted um, uh click her screen or, or their screen okay and the left side you should have a microphone button you should be able to unclick yeah just click the little microphone button it probably has a line through it right danny yeah, right with the line. yes yep we should start another group called Sarah's Sisters where we can talk about quilting and stuff like that. Crochet the different <laughs> ways from the bag ladies and bag dudes, but we can help, you know, and our group a little. Okay, finally finished weeding. I hate weeding. What are you making over there, Diane? I see you're busy working. I'm working on the Cumberland backpack for my granddaughter. Oh, for back to school. How old is your granddaughter? She will be 13 in September. Did she choose the fabric or is it like a surprise that you chose? No, she chose the fabric. Nice. She chose the uh, All Stars, the frog prints. Nice. I love those frogs. Hey guys, I got you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, there's a bad echo. Hmm. Okay, you know what? It's my crappy phone. Ha! <laughs> Let me try something different. Diane, could we see you? Do what? Do we see your Cumberland? Well, it's it's all it's not. Oh, the fabric? Yeah, yeah. it's the frog prints, and this oh, is the lining. Oh, pink Cumberland! Wow. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. be awesome. Oh, gonna... that is gonna be awesome. Make sure you post that. I want to see what it's gonna look like. I wanted to make one, but with the tulip pink. Okay, I will. That's gonna be great. Oh, you got a buddy there. Here's too. my. Aww. Yeah, this is this is Bear. He's my labradoodle. <laughs> The, the comment I need to go back in on this one because apparently I was too narrow on my seam, so I have a couple of, of holes. But uh Oh wow. Oh that's, oh, that's <laughs> awesome. So it's it's almost done and then I gotta bind it, but I've got a spot over on this side where apparently I didn't catch it. I didn't catch the uh the vinyl on the side, so I gotta go back in. That's awesome. Is that glitter vinyl? It is glitter vinyl. It's red glitter oh, vinyl. Wow. That is so flipping cute. Oh my goodness. Yep. I want to make one just like that with this the backstitch fabric with that same fabric. So I have somewhere my first uh 
pouch and I used one of those Mickey turn locks and my measurements and it ended up being too short. So I had to redo a new one. So I just did a magnetic, but the, the front pocket ended up too small somehow. Mm. I don't know. You, you probably were watching the Gilmore Girls when you cut out your fabric. <laughs> Actually, right now I'm, I'm binging West Wing again, so that would have been more likely. Oh, West Wing, I, have, I need to add that to my thing. Oh. You have beautiful Disney designs there. Backstitch. We don't have those here. Oh, Backstitch. don't get started. Hold on, I'm saving you time. Hold on, don't listen to her, Louisa. You're going to be sucking into the world of all these private groups with amazing Disney fabrics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. May I ask you what's the material on the the back of the vinyl? Um, Is it polyester or cotton? That's Sarah's glitter vinyl, so it's the um the canvas. I don't yeah, know what like canvas a, is. It's like a thin can like a like a woven uh it's thinner than like duck cloth. Quill? How do I not have a scrap here somewhere? It's I don't have any up here, I, I have think. Piece. I have a piece. I got a piece. Got it. Who's first? <laughs> All right. So this is the front. This is a the light green, I think it is. So the back, okay. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like it doesn't stretch. I'm kind of here. It's yeah. if you scratch it, it's a it's a can. It's like like if you went to the like craft store and bought a canvas. Like a it's like bag. that. That's the feeling of the back of it. But okay. it's super I, thin. I think. You I think it would be like a polyester. No. 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 Is it is it a cotton canvas, Sarah? Do you know? I can look yeah, it's website. cotton. It's it's cotton. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cotton canvas on the back. Uh, okay, fantastic. so you cannot. Uh, I don't know how you say that, but dry cut. Yes, oh, yeah, you, you can, can leave the edges raw. You can. Yep. Ah, uh, okay. Normally, uh, the vinyls we have here, when they have the backing of cotton, you cannot dry cut it. It must be however they do it. But yeah, you can see like the edge of this. Um, it's not going to fray at all. Uh -huh. It's the cork, right? Yeah. Well, uh, well the backing is different. Really fray, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the cork yeah. fabric is the same. Yeah. Oh, I might have that too. Oh. So I would love to have this cork fabric, but I have no idea where to buy it here. So I've never this seen guy, it, at least. This, this guy is cork. It was a cork scrap that I had. So it's got, it's a fabric kind of feeling on the back, but absolutely leave it raw. These, and this is also glitter vinyl. So these are embroidery and these will, the edges will be raw on all of them after I cut them. Um, which this is... glitter, I think we have it here. Yeah. I don't know if it's the same, but it's basically the same. Yeah. It looks pretty much alike. Christina, I, I need that um, the thing with the, the Sleeping Beauty fairies on it. I need it in my life. <laughs> oh, uh, that's it's backstitch jelly pens is the fabric. There's like hundreds of characters on there. Uh, I'm just saying, like, the one that you made. Oh, please. The sanitizer holder? Send it, send it to me, because I'm addicted to sleeping beauty. Like, I literally, I have a tattoo on the back of my, right there, that says, make it blue. Oh, that is fantastic. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, my goodness. But yeah, I'm a little bit addicted to, to sleeping beauty. Sleeping and the fairy is, like, the best princess. I, the fairies are the best part of that movie. They really are. Right, especially like the part where she's like, oh, it, it's it's ugly. Well, that's because it's on you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Blue, pink, blue, pink. Yes. That, that whole obviously, thing. Obviously, I'm team blue. <laughs> Hey Sarah, I wanted to show you. Oops, am I on? I wanted to show you my so uh, my airplane bag traveled with me my entire oh, I see two it. Last I see trip, it. and awesome. it held up really well. It was jammed in there every day. Oh good, <laughs> awesome. Uh, 
we stayed more than two, no more than two nights at a hotel and then uh and i realized because somebody uh told me before i cut my squirrels out be careful how i cut them mm -hmm. because we were prepping for the retreat mm -hmm. that i would get them lined up right with the handles and center them mm -hmm. and i didn't realize until i was on the trip and looking at the end of my bag that it centered them on the ends too so oh, they're like wow that's lucky that it fit on there like that yeah i mean it it is kind of funny on both ends i've got <laughs> squirrels <laughs> Other, which it's super cool if you so apparently the way the fabric is laid out it's like perfect for the regular sized airplane bag if you center it mm -hmm. and I wanted to share that I thought that was cool <laughs> now we'd like to thank everyone who showed up and participating uh, this, I'm glad it worked this time a lot better than the last month's because that was wretchedly horrible and I felt horrible it was that. not and that bad it, it was we fun get it working for the you know Facebook and YouTube so everyone can watch, and I do appreciate oh, you guys showing up. Okay. Uh, but we're probably gonna have to end this pretty soon because we do have to go in the morning. We're gonna go out to with Sarah's friend to um, where's it? Shed Aquarium. Yes, Shed Aquarium. At nine in the morning, and Sarah probably needs to go to bed like in ten minutes. Otherwise, she's gonna be cranky all day tomorrow. No, I am not gonna be cranky. <laughs> <laughs> See, coffee helps with that, Sarah. It really does. Maybe I need to, <laughs> do you think I'm too old to start drinking coffee? I don't know. No, 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 no like never too young. Stay with tea. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a coffee drinker. I, I've i tried it. It's not, it's not for me. You're, you're never too old to drink coffee. Never. <laughs> never too old to drink never it. Too old never to too young to start. That's right. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, it's been a blast and everything worked out fine tonight so I'm happy about that and some people got some sewing projects done like Michelle so thanks so much for joining us <laughs> nice. thank you very much night, everybody. Everybody. Yeah, thank you good night everyone good night, good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.